Good morning. Welcome to the sewing quarter. Uh, she's Hannah, I've got the dinosaur. I've got him. Um, I've had to wrench this little chap off, which is Hannah, who um, has basically been cuddling him all morning, basically. Uh, and that is what we've got at eight o'clock. Not produce Hannah. Well, she is on. But would you like to see the whole menu? Let's take a look and see what we've got. Coming up, here's the menu. 8 a.m. Joe Carter's dinosaur in purple or blue. Purple or blue. That's your choice this morning. Um, well, we never knew what colour dinosaurs were, did we? So no, we've gone for we've gone for multicoloured. Uh, 9 a.m. Victoria Pete's crisscross quilt, uh, which is absolutely pretty as anything. It's very very lovely. It's designed by the technical editor of today's quilter, Laura Pritchard, and Victoria Pete has made her her style on it this morning. 10 a.m. Joe Carter's Rex beanbag. It's all about dinosaurs today. Oh yeah, brand new dinosaur fabrics to bring you there. And you can make that into a bean bag or a poof, whatever you like. Uh, then 11 a.m. we've got Victoria's crisscross apron. And can I show you this actually? Cause look, look, look at the little cross stitch bees. Ooh, how beautiful is that? So following on from yesterday's cross stitch launch, Let's bring you some more cross stitch in more ways because so many of you haven't even put your cross stitches up on the wall. So we're like, right, put it on an apron, be useful. This is the quilt that we're making today, that Victoria's making with us today. Pretty, very, very pretty. And this is the new dinosaur fabric. Whoop. Stay there. Uh, apparently I have to squish his tail. Right, I'll squish his tail in a minute. Let me show you the dinosaur fabric. This is brand new to wear at ba -ba -ba -ba, 10 o'clock. Dinosaurs. Love a Look at this. One of my favourite films is One of My Dinosaurs is Missing. That's what that reminds me of. Love that film. It's just so wrong when you watch it these days. There we go. Now, if you would like to get in touch this morning, head to the website, which is sewingquarter.com. There it is. Uh, and you can watch us live from there. So head to watch, click on that. That's where you'll find us. And you'll find us in HD there. Woo! Uh, and then you can message the studio, say hello, or ask questions, or whatever else you'd like to, like to get into. I do like our messages, actually. It's really nice. And then if you want to see all the products from all of the shows today, they will come up live underneath so if you are shopping with us, maybe for the first time, lots of new viewers yesterday with the cross stitch launch. If you are shopping with us for the first time, that's where you find everything that are on the shows. And then, you know, delve into the rest of the website because there's oodles on there too. But that's where you'll find all the products on today's show. That's like your quick reference, easy way to find it. If, of course, you've got pictures that you would like to share and apologies again for not managing to show all of the cross stitch pictures that you sent in yesterday. We had over 50 sent in, producer Hannah. There were loads. There just wasn't time. Then emailing is studio at sewingquarter.com. So we'll try and show um, maybe some dinosaur pictures today if we get sent in some of those. But I did appreciate looking at all of, the, all of your cross stitches on the fan page. It was lovely. So studio at sewingquarter.com. That's how you send in pictures. And of course, we are assuming that if you are sending them in, it's OK to show them on air. Yes. Now, um, that's how you message in. Always, always fun to do that. And um, let's have a look at this little dinosaur in detail, shall we? Um, here he is. Now, two different colorways for you this morning. There he is. Ba, 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 ba. Um, now, Jo says she's got um, a fabulous lesson in nostrils for us today and eyebrows. There he is, looking good. Nostrils and brows, all about the nostrils and brows, <laughs> and the geeky teeth. <laughs> I love his geeky teeth. They're, they're, I think that's what makes him so non-threatening. Yeah, he is gorgeous. I've got two bundles for you this morning. Uh, if you want to be able to make the purple and pink one, um, and we'd like names for him today, actually. We're a bit stuck on names. What should we call him? Here we go. You get half a metre of your pink, half a metre of your purple. This bundle is enough to make two, two dinosaurs. So if you've got a couple of grandkids, then you're all right. It's so soft. I do love it. You also get your thread. You also get 
Um, you also get your eyes, three sets of eyes there. So you'll have a spare, spare eye. <laughs> Do you think he saw us? Um, then there for his teeth. Loads, isn't there? And then you get full instructions as well. And your stuffing. <laughs> Even though someone did message in the other day and say, can you please stop putting stuffing with Joe Carter's kits? I've got so much stuffing because there's always so much. We like to think of it as insulating your house and uh, it's all good. If you've never seen a Joe Carter kit before, we'll look at those instructions in detail in one moment, but let me show you everything else because look, we've also got the blue and white. This is the one that Joe's gonna make today. I like the blue and white, I have to say. Uh, Producer Ham just wants one. She doesn't care which one. She's just, all she's done is cuddle the dinosaur this morning. That was it, we had to wrench it off her. And she's like, but you can do stuff and cuddle at the same time. It's true. She said, because he's got arms, you can, you can hold on to him or, just, or he just fits nicely. You know, if you have a waist, then he just fits nicely. I don't. There we go. Um, now, you've got your thread as well. Half a metre of your blue, half a metre of your white. And your teeth. Well, it's felt. It'll become teeth. And your instructions and your stuffing and your eyes. Three sets of eyes. So you've got spare eyes. Um, and there you go. Twenty-four ninety-nine. Possibly producer Hannah's favourite ever. Did you need some eyes? Maybe. It's a good job I've got a spare set, isn't it? Now, I've got to do today because we're going to do, um, loads of you already put this in your baskets. We do have lots to do today. We've got to do as much of the face as we can. Yes. Okay. Hello, Hello by the way. Come on, Hickam. Oh, come in here and crack the view. Come on, Joe, <laughs> get on. Okay. Right. Um, could I have a look at the instructions just to <laughs> make sure? <laughs> Always a good start. No, I just want to make sure I'm doing it in the right order. <laughs> So Jo designs these toys herself. Um, <laughs> you don't print the instructions though, do you? You take the photos for it and you write them and then technical editors yes. do their thing. And I brought up on my um, computer, I brought up the text, but I didn't have the pictures and I, I realised that maybe I should have printed them out so I was doing it in the correct order. Okay, but it's all good. There we go. Eyebrows, I'll start with eyebrows. Well, why not? We've already had conversations about eyebrows this morning. Here we go. There is your dinosaur eyebrows. He does have a fine pair of eyebrows. Just to give his face a little bit more character. And, because there's not an awful lot going on on a T-Rex's face. Well, you know. He's not got, you know, fancy ears or anything. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we've gone with eyebrows instead. You see, what ears have survived? That's the thing. Because obviously, you know, the bones survive. But what ears? Oh. How would they know? He might have had like big floppy spaniel ears, we'd never know. Yeah, there's maybe that could be, you know, version two. Another design. <laughs> <laughs> right, this is the eyebrow piece. Um, this fabric is, it takes some getting used to working with. Um, this is the correct side, it's the shaggier side. Um, but it is quite tricky to even to mark out on. But if, so you need a good, a good marking out pen to draw around all your shapes. I know you used a, um, a marker pen, didn't you? used a Sharpie. Normally we would, you know, I Joe would be there with a water erasable going yeah. crazy. But this time you used a Sharpie marker pen. Only because I've left my water erasable pen somewhere. <laughs> do you not have at least 18? <laughs> I do have a few and I've, I've left them. Obviously they're in a bag or somewhere. Some safe. So, yeah. Okay. So mark out all the pieces. Use a slightly wider stitch length, um, 2.2, 2.5, only because, I'll show you on one of these, the stitches really do get buried in the seams. So if you need to do any unpicking, it's really difficult. You're never going to find it. To find them. So a slightly wider stitch length okay. helps. But I'll put that. Can we do a bigger version and have like a onesie? A onesie? What? Adapt it into for a, hum yes. for a human child. <laughs> Would we go with child? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It looks so cosy. <laughs> it would be nice. It'd make a nice hood, yeah. wouldn't it? The, uh, yeah. But the face is where we're, where we're at this morning. Yes, yeah, so I'll start with the eyebrows. And this is the piece for the eyebrows. And it's, I'm going it's to fold it. It's like the bottom of a rosette. It is. It needs to be folded in half. And this angled side, just stitched down there just to hold it together, here's what I've done, when it's turned out the right way, just to seal it on one end. And it's not quite a straight edge, it's got a slightly smoother 
almost a curve for his craggy eyebrow. Here we go. This is this is the, the curve bit. So it's always that attention for detail that, that we love with Joe's toys. So there's there's the curvy bit. It's not quite like a Dennis Healy eyebrow, is it? But it's not far off. Yeah. Looking good there. Oh, uh, producer Hannah says there are lots of them in the basket. Please do check out your baskets. You don't want to miss out this morning. So because of the fluff of the fabric, make sure I've got it set so it's a quarter inch because it's a six millimeter quarter inch seam allowance right but I want to see the fluff at the side just to know that I'm taking at least that quarter an inch seam allowance okay. and once you've done it you can always open it up and make sure you've got it a good seam allowance on both sides right and sewing this bit I've started from the folded side and finished on the cut edge just because sometimes the needle can push the fabric down and chew the edge if you start at the cut edge. Yeah, some some machines are more prone to chewing than others. Mine's mine's a bit of a chewer, I'll be yeah. honest. So it just reduces that if you start at the folded side and sew that way. Okay. And cool. then once that end's done, turn it the right way. And then I'm just going to baste this long side together just to hold the raw edges level and even. So why haven't we done this edge here? Because this edge folds over and is sewn into that seam just to shape the eyebrows oh, a little bit more as well. Oh, into the front head part. Oh, I see. The sort of twisted. Cool. Just to give it a little bit of a craggy brow. Is that, is that a technical term, a craggy brow? It is now. Yeah. Ooh. I'm just going to uh, oh, the, do the technical. The ever, the ever handy turn it off and on again. <laughs> Do you need to increase your stitch length again? Oh, or it, does it keep it? I do. There we go. Now, Caroline in the Scottish borders says, good morning, ladies. Great project from Joe, as usual. Lovely dress, Tash. Thanks. In fact, it's just a top, actually, but it's, uh, it's comfy. Elastic is my friend. It's elastic is everybody's friend. <laughs> <laughs> and Jill in West Yorkshire. Oh, are we on the West Yorkshire again, producer Hannah? Is this is oh yes. Um, got my dino kit. Love Joe's toys. I have a dragon cut and ready to sew. Is this quite similar to the dragon in terms of body parts? Yes and no. Um, the nostrils are done in a different way for this one, so they stand up off the face, whereas the dragon has them set into the face. Right. Recessed nostrils. Recessed nostrils. Right, okay. Um, are those ones in relief then? Is that the... I can't think of the technical term. Um, there are stitch lines on the stomach. No, there were. <laughs> <laughs> Nasal technical terms, but we'll go with it. Yeah. I'm stomach? The stitch lines on the stomach are the same, I think, for the dragon. And does the dragon have... No, I think that's... Uh, there are um, differences because with the dragon, the limbs are stitched directly into the seam, so they're a bit more floppy. We just love him. Producer Hannah says he just wants to give a hug with his tiny arms. There you go. So I've got two eyebrows done now, and those edges are basted together. And it, when they're sewn in, into position, it just means that the edges are level and one side's not slipped away, and then you'll get a, you know, you'll see the raw edge and there'll be a little hole. And then this is the back of the face. So this section here, behind the eyebrow, You know, I can see that. And we want to base the eyebrow. Right. So raw edges, this open end, raw edges to this raw edge, and just based in position down here. You can give it a little bit of a pin so it doesn't shift out of position. With this, if you take a little bit more of a seam allowance, that's better than taking too little. Right. Go a little bit more generous okay. if needs be. Now, do I need a different needle for this? Or anything like that? I will often sew these with a, my standard um, 12 in, but a 14 will be good as well. Okay. And once you've got it, you're good to go. You've got enough to make two in this bundle, which is fab. Um, both colours are level pegging. You see, we didn't know this morning which was going to be most popular. Couldn't call it. I love the blue. Producer Hannah loves the purple. Uh, well, she just loves him, actually. She wouldn't care what colour. She just loves him. Right, 
Um, this is the one I need. And then once that's basted into position, I want to sew this part of the face on and it will sandwich ah. the eyebrow in place. And then in a minute, it will twist around and the top will fold over that way. So you get that turn. Is that, are we coming down the front face here? I'm sewing down here now to just join these face so we've, pieces So we've together. got that joined. We're going to now sew down there so that we've then got this bit on. Cool. I need, you see, I always need to know where we're at because the, the pictures, the pieces don't necessarily... No, they don't necessarily look uh, <laughs> quite like parts of an animal or a dinosaur. Um, I've just taken some of the loose fibres from the end just to try and make it that bit easier to see. Now, with this, when you cut it out, could you mark um, which is the wrong side and which is the right, just to make it easier? You could do. Just leave a little dot or a mark on either, on each piece for the yeah. wrong side. Just because they do look so similar. They do. And actually, you could probably use either side. It's just the longer pile side would be more difficult to mark out on. So that's how you're going to know. I like it both both sides. Maybe I'll do one one way and one the other. Yeah, just get mm -hmm. the difference between them. Um, Pauline says, morning ladies, love the nails and fabric coordination. <laughs> jo? <laughs> um, Would you like to explain why? <laughs> I, <laughs> I might have got marker pen over these nails and it just showed through a slightly a, a more muted tone. So I thought I'd have to go with... Um, a slightly it, stronger colour. It's not actually called dinosaur blue. It's what is what's it called? It's called roll in the grass, which is aware. I'd love to be part of the naming department. <laughs> <laughs> Me too, and yet I never am. This is actually looking like a side of a face, Joe. This is it unusual for your kids. <laughs> <laughs> I can actually visualise what it is. Yeah, <laughs> no, this is great. Um, at this point, you can just to make sure that the eyebrow folds in the right direction. You can baste it to this way so that it doesn't fold backwards like that. So you could base this edge down. Okay, oh, that's how you're getting that lovely shape. And you just get that little bit of a twist then. Nice. In the eyebrow. And this fabric's quite forgiving, isn't it? Once you get used to it. Yes, it does take a bit of get, getting used to, but it is, you've got that stretch and it makes it easier to work with in a lot of instances. But it's just trying to see the cut edge sometimes yeah. because it does become obscured by the fibres. Now, uh, a lot of you are asking, can you get the fabric separately? It's only part of the bundle this morning, I'm afraid. So um, you have to pick which colours you want, and off you go. It's, it's quite a hard one for us to source. We do get it in just, yeah. just for you. And you all have leftover fabric, so it's always, it's always lovely. Right, I'll move on to a nostril. And actually, I recommend preparing the nostrils by hand in that pattern, and especially so with this fabric. Okay. It's just a diamond-shaped piece. Get my thread. Here's the nose. The nostril close up. They just stand up off the face just to give the face a little bit more depth and interest. Love him. Okay, so diamond. And this direction is slightly shorter than that one, so I'm going to bring, fold it that way, bring the two corners that are closest together mm -hmm. um, to meet. And then I'm just going to stitch inside the seam allowance so these stitches won't show later. Although, actually, they're unlikely to show anyway because the, of the pile of the fabric. Now, your pattern pieces are all in your instructions. Uh, let me show you these because there, there are a lot. There are a lot. But just follow it through methodically, step by step. You can reuse these. I know that a lot of you, well, especially with the, the bunnies and the, uh, all the Eastery ones, they've been going crazy, multiplying all over the place. But these are your, these are your dinosaur pieces. <laughs> oh, just brilliant. So, um, you know, just once you get going, I think, you know, you'll, you'll make two out of this bundle. And then maybe if you get the dinosaur fabric, you can make dinosaurs out of dinosaur fabrics. Double dinosaur. Double dinosaur day. Uh, Sean in Hampshire says, morning, Joe and Tash. Love, 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 love. Joe's designs. And uh, flippity-doo-dah, Tash, when, you, when are you due? 
Uh, you're going to be huge in the summer. <laughs> Love, Sean. <laughs> Thanks, I know. I'm due till September. I'm, all, I'm already mammoth size. It's all good. Second time around, body just gives up, doesn't it? <laughs> gives in to the inevitable. <laughs> Fine. There we go. So I've folded it in half and just basted Followed the line. along just to hold those raw edges together and level. And then I'm going to fold it over again this way. And then this folded edge will form the nostril. Oh, nice. Chris wants to know, um, do you need to add a seam allowance to the pattern? No, seam allowances are included. I always Bad. include the seam allowance. There you go. Thank you, Joe. Now, someone this morning on the fan page was saying that they wanted to increase the size. And if they just, if they just photocopied it larger, did that matter with the seam allowance? Um, it does make a difference. The seam allowance remains constant throughout. So if you're going to enlarge, draw in the seam allowance and then enlarge it and then work out where the cut edge would be in relation to the seam allowance you've drawn on. Add your quarter inch to the line you drew in, if right. that makes sense. I'm with you. Yeah, because it'll be smaller, won't it, if you've, if you've, if you've increased it? Then yes. you'll, want, you'll end up with a small one. I had a friend who, the dragon pattern, she reduced it by half. But because she'd reduced it by half, that meant the seam allowance was always also reduced by half. So she added an eighth of an inch around right. the sides. So it does. It does make a difference. So, you know, I know a lot of you want to adapt your patterns once you get them. Um, make them, I'd say make them a couple of times first before. Well, I mean, it depends how experienced, what do I know? Chris says, good morning, girls. Do I need to add? Oh, no, we've done that one. Um, also, a note about um, when she said she was going to reduce the dragon by 50%, I said she was crazy okay all right. <laughs> and I wouldn't have done it but she's made an amazing job but um it's not making life easy for yourself <laughs> miniature dragon <laughs> miniature dragon I'll I've asked can I post a picture of it later so I will do now we've had some photographs in from Ruth now you see once you dinosaur you can't stop They're check brilliant. these out wow see they're not extinct anymore are they no they're uh, alive so she picking. made an entire family as Christmas presents they're brilliant. I love the colour range. Isn't it lovely? Oh, she said that they asked her family asked because she gave them to her family. Her family asked where did she buy them, and she said it's all down to Joe Carter's fabulous patterns. Well, it's the pattern is just the starting point. I mean, I love seeing how you know where people go with them, what people make. There we go. I've got the nostril. I folded it over again and basted this edge. Okay. And then we should have there the little looped nostril. Okay. And then it's marked on the template. I'm now, I kept the thread on, make sure the nostril's facing forward and I'm going to baste it into position also okay. on the middle face. This is the middle face bit. The dart is at the back of the head. So it's all, all of those um, little marks on here show you the positions of various bits and bobs? Yes. Okay. This corresponds to the eyebrow, I think. Okay, and your nose, your nose mark is in there. So I'll attach this quickly. And it just means the nostril is held in the right place. It's not going to slip because if one slips and the other one doesn't, you'll end up with one bigger nostril than the other. Oh, really? So I would really recommend taking the time. And it doesn't take too long. A wonky nose. We don't want wonky noses. It is only moments, isn't it? But it does make a difference. It just helps out a lot. I tried doing it with the, my tester sample and I gave up trying to keep them level without basting them in like this. Okay. Well, that's good to know that even you struggle with it. And then you find us a solution, which is even better. Well, there's always got to be ways to make things yeah, easier. Yeah, no, absolutely. There we go. So, so there you go. So that's a nose in. And so Joe's just basted that into place along there. Look at him. Oh. More purple than blue. Oh, he looks quite sad, doesn't oh, he? He does from that. Uh... But then like that. <laughs> He's got a really characterful face. Um, him. Face shaping. I hope you'll get to that at the end. Face shaping is vital in the dinosaur, just to pull his eyes inwards. OK. Um, I had somebody send me a message um, to say when they finished it and stuffed it, they thought it looks terrible. It doesn't look right at all. And then just adding that internal stitch to pull the eyes inwards. That's transformed that's what did it. it. So once you've basted one nostril in, 
do the same for the other side. And then, oh, that was lucky. I did sew it onto the side. I need it on. I didn't check. <laughs> ah, little few. Oh, now, um, I know what I was going to ask. I forgot for a moment there, but I've just remembered. There is a nap to this fabric. Yes. Um, there's a knack and a nap. So when when I cut it out, do I have to make sure the nap is all going in the same direction? Yes, there are um, arrows on the templates to show which way right. the nap should go. So if you I brush it that way, you can see it goes in that direction because if I do it that way, it all... Right, OK. Up. So with your fabric, I'll get my piece, my leftover piece. So I've cut two out of this and I've got this left over. That's left after two? It is. Gosh. So that's, so the pile goes in that direction. So I'd turn it over and cut it out that way. Okay. But yes, there's plenty left. Hang on, let's just show everyone that again. So it's like when you, um, when you stroke a dog's fur, yeah. isn't it? You want it to go in the same direction. They don't like it if you ruffle it up the wrong way. So if I turn that over, so when you cut it, like that'll go down the body like that. And then, because if you do it like that, then every time you stroke it, you'll be ruffling his fur. Yes. Okay. Now, um, whilst you just get that ready to go, I'm just going to go and have a very, very quick look at bundles. Okay. And then I'll be back. All right, because purple is in the lead at the moment. Purple and pink. Do you know what either one that you get is going to be absolutely fabulous, isn't it? $24.99, and you can make two. And you've just seen how much Joe had left over after having cut out two. So, you know, you, you do get an awful lot. Um, and then you also get your felt for your teeth, your thread, stuffing, of course, and your eyes, and your full instructions there. Here's your whole bundle. There you go. Um, so that's, that is option one. Uh, please check out your bundle and you can be making a couple of these little chaps. They are superb. Absolutely superb. Love it. Uh, now, if you want to go blue and white, here we go. This is your blue and white option. Again, half a meter of each of these fabrics. You can make at least two here. Um, and, but then you see, having seen a lot of you, that you don't stop at two. You go crazy and do more. And there he is, looking good. $24.99, fabulous. And your eyes and everything else. Oh, brilliant. Okay, so nostril basted in. I've just popped a pin in so that the eyebrow folds towards the front of the face. But you could have basted that in if you wanted have to. Basted if okay. you want. And then I'm just going to start at the bottom and bring this round and sew. It's probably easier. I always sew it with this bit on top. It might be easier. Have a little bit of a tr practice either way and see which way you find more comfortable, um, whether having this piece on top would be easier. But they've got the markers in there that correspond to the nostrils and the eyebrow, just to make sure it's on track. Because it's, there's quite a bit of give in this fabric, isn't there? So you don't want to be pulling it out of shape and ending up with a, with a funny face. Yes. It does pull out of shape, but then by the same token, if you, you're coming up a bit short, you can sometimes just give it a little bit of a... He can twidge it. A, yes. I do, I really want to make one of these. Right, lift the presser foot up, reg, foot up regularly, smooth those edges down, and just make sure I'm taking a good seam allowance. Go through that. And then my, those points to points as you go through. Uh, Brenda has sent us a message. What's she saying? Uh, she says, "Morning, Tash and Joe. Love the demo. Uh, the dino. It's demo dino. Um, but do you do the fabric in grey? As my five-year-old um, dino professor will go nuts if I give him a blue." <laughs> Purple one. Oh, no, we don't. Um, but when you have your instructions, you can, yeah, do you have somebody else you can make a couple of dinos for and then get some grey? So, you know, you'd have a couple of practice runs. And he might come round to, uh, to, to purple because there's no actual proof what colour they were. No. Well, we do think possibly, is it raptors might have had feathers or... 
Oh, really? I think so. I think it's raptors. I'm sure I've read that somewhere. My son actually just um, corrects my pronunciation of dinosaurs. And my mum's, and we just stand corrected. No idea. I'm forever told that there's no such thing as a pterodactyl. Okay. It's a pterodon, apparently. I think I think I got that right. I think I probably don't got... they? They know. I mean, they might not be able to say things like, you know, fork and spoon, but they can, they can say dinosaur names. Oh, yes. Yeah, all of them. Excellent. Right, so stitch the side on and just check that there's the seam allowance is even all the way across. If it's a bit short in places, you can often get away with just going over it and just taking a little bit extra. And just making sure your nose and your brows are all encased in there. So it's all in the seam. Flip it over this way and the nostril. <sighs> See, it's there. And the eyebrow. Okay. Um, at what point do the eyes go in? I've done, do the other side. And then you can pop the eyes in at this point. So I'll pop some eyes in. Okay. Um, with this fabric, make absolutely the smallest hole. Um, if you can only just snip the one thread even, it, because it will open up. If you take too big a hole, it will open up and become too big for the eye. To support the eye, if you want, you could always add um, a little square of felt as oh, well. Okay. So We've it just makes plenty, it thicker and there's more yeah. for it to grab. Uh, now, obviously, we have to say that um, if you are giving this to an under three, embroider the eye on um, just is basically the rule of thumb is that if it's smaller than a 2p piece then don't give it to a two-year-old or younger because you know we don't want, we, don't, we don't want choking so i really did just snip the one thread and it's opened up to fit that through if you want to put the felt in just to make it thicker you can do but then give this a real push down and it needs to be really tight to the fabric there we go okay that one in now you get three sets of eyes in the kit which actually is very handy in our household because my great dane has um just chewed out the eyes of um of a polar bear my son's devastated oh no yeah so i might have to um yeah take some spare eyes see i always drop them so at least if I've got another one in the packet, I can put that on and then find the one I've got Somewhere I've in your home, there are a lot of eyes, aren't there? There are. Watching you. <laughs> there we go. So those are the eyes in. And it's really starting to take shape now. Oh, look at that. <gasps> Could you imagine that as a kid's towel? You know, the, the, yeah. the towels where they go over... Can you do that for us as well? Where they sure. come over the top of the head like that. Oh, it'd be amazing. <laughs> that would be really cute. Right, for the chin... It's this piece, they're all covered in blue fluff. Okay. So I'm going to put them right sides together and sew along this front edge mm -hmm. here. Uh, Chris, yes, you can just use normal cotton fabric. We've sourced this because it's cute and gorgeous. Um, but if you wanted, you know, once you've got the kit, you've made these up, if you wanted to then go on and use normal cotton fabric, you absolutely can. Isn't that right, Jeff? Yes, if you're using cotton, remember to clip into internal corners and around curves. <clears throat> ah, yes. Uh, now, Tina's sent in a photo. Oh, this is her dinosaur. Oh, Joe, look with the scar. <gasps> That's fabulous. Now, she didn't have the instructions, so she had, to, um, she had to make it up. Ah. I don't know where they were, but she didn't have them. That's excellent. So I think she's done really well. Yeah. Nice scarf. It does look fabulous, scarf. Yeah. All right, so I stitched... The chin together it looks like there isn't much of a seam allowance there but it's just squidged down as you can see you check every time don't you these seams i do otherwise they pull if it, something pulls open you've got a hole in it it's fine to hand stitch it closed but it can be a bit frustrating right now i'm going to base the teeth onto the, the chin isn't it yeah so i'm just going to fold it in half just to find the center and then i want that to line up with that seam so that his teeth aren't squiffy. Sorry, sorry, his teeth aren't squiffy. Well, you know, <laughs> slightly ripped to one side. Uh, I, it's an orthodontist nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's okay, his teeth aren't squiffy. It's all right, everyone. He's got perfect teeth. <laughs> well, they didn't have orthodontics batting in the day, did they? No, I mean, maybe that's why they became extinct. Bad teeth? Yes. 
Bad dan dental, you know, care. He's obviously got good dental hygiene because they're very white teeth. They are super white. You know, so he he's doing all right. Right, so I'm just going to baste within the seam allowance just to hold the teeth in position to the chin piece. Rip that thin out. Because you want perfect meshes. You do. I'm just looking at all these little these pieces that we still have left to go. I know, I'm so mindful of time. Well, no, it's just, I was thinking, what bit's the crown? It looks like he's got a crown, but it's actually his, um, his toe detailing. They, yes, they are his toes. So this goes just straight down. Just fits, the top flat edge of the teeth just fits all around. Uh -huh, like that. They are. And actually basting it to this, side does help them point I mean I know they're a bit all over the show um which is part of the charm but it, basting it to this side does help them face downwards a little more okay right and then I'm going to line up there's a marker for the center no I'm not that's a lie I'm going to do this all in one piece because we want to pivot at this seam here so I'm going to start here and sew up to this point so it's beyond the corner as you look at it here because I want it to correspond with this point just right. above. And then I'll pivot there and bring this round and fit it. And you're gonna do that in a one? In a one, yeah. Now and you don't need to clip because of the stretch, but if you were making it in cotton, you'd need to clip at that corner. Because with the, with the bears, you used to go from the center of the head out. I would do Could a lot of- Could you do that with this or not? The only problem with this is easier, if you're going to pivot at the corner, it's easier to have the chin piece on top. And if you do it in two halves, for one half, it's not going to be, it's on, not top. Going to be oh, on top. I see. On top. Right. So bring that round, pull that corner of the fabric out, line it back up. More po purple dinosaurs um, have found homes in the blue. Uh, the blue is, is you know, still the, the more extinct of the two. Uh, Moya in Derbyshire says, good morning, lovely ladies. Just wanted to say happy Wednesday, says Moya. How lovely. Happy Wednesday. Uh, Producer Hannah's renamed it Dinosaur Wednesday. Dinosaur Wednesday. Well, it is here, isn't it? We've got new dinosaur fabrics. We've got dinosaur toys. It's all about the dinosaurs this morning. But happy Wednesday to you, Moya. Some people call this hump day, don't they? They do. Because you're over the hump of the week. Okay. All the dinosaurs back. Yes, Producer Hannah. Yeah. and speed up a little bit so we can move on to the body. Hannah, is this your favourite over the budgie? Because I know that you were a big budgie fan. Really? Oh, because it's so cuddly. And she loves his little arms at the front. Yeah, you see the budgies didn't have arms at the front, did they? So again, pivoting at the corner of the mouth with the needle down through the fabric. Well, when you said get a wriggle on, you, you really yeah, did. Going for it then. Yeah, gosh. There we go. We have his little head. Look at that. And his teeth in. And I've left that dart in the back of the head, which I've not snipped. <laughs> there we Bruce go. says she wants one in blue. Well, Bruce Hannah, but how about you buy one in blue? I'll buy one in purple and we'll share. We'll have one each. <coughs> we could swap. Yeah, there you go. There we go. So the head's done, and I'll move on to the body. With the stomach to get those stitch lines, just mark lines across the body at even, at sort of equal distance and stitch them on. Really sim simply, it is just a stitch line. Secure it at the end. So it's almost like chest quilting. It is. Can we also do, do hand puppets? We could, I have a hand puppet. There's a hand puppet in Simply Sewing this month. Oh, is there? But, uh, yes, a little, a really simple teddy bear hand puppet. Oh, <gasps> fabulous. There we go. So carry on, do stitch lines all the way down. I'll leave the last two for time. Then with the stomach, it's similar to can you see the chest quilting if I just hold that like that? There you go. Yeah, oh, look. Like yeah, look at that. It's just a nice detailing, isn't it? It does. It just gives it a little bit of extra something. 
These are the arms. And it might help to re refer back to the template, actually. The slightly wider um, section, this is a, a, a tighter V. That's the hand side. Right. And this is the join to the body. Um, this is possibly Bridget Hannah's favourite bit. So she, she wants a close-up to his little arms. And they fit around this little V-shaped opening here. So, so the I'll wider sew, one. The wider opening in the arm. So I'll sew to here, pivot, and then readjust to sew along that section there. So I'll do one side. Jumping for joy. So pivoting. Pivoting there, needle down, just rearrange. Can you mark so that pivot bit. point again? I think I would you need can. to. Okay, there we go. I'll just do one side of the body because I have a pre-made body. Okay, um, but it's not, how does that then? This will be the inside of this, of the arm. Right. And then where does the outside? The outside is attached to this. Oh! It's on the side body piece. Oh, I see. Yes, so of course it is. So we've only got one little arm bit to do. And the same with the leg. Um, this is the right one. And again, stitch around this wider V. Pause there with the needle down to readjust for this second section. Jutana says, so actually the body is quite simple. She says, when she says simple, obviously she's never made a toy, but it's looking quite simple. The body is quite yeah. simple. Producer Hannah, we will have a dinosaur day and we will make dinosaurs. If I like to have, if there's a fiddly bit in a pattern, I like to sort of, the payoff is an easy bit somewhere later on. Okay, all right. Well, um, that's so good. nostrils, bit fiddly, so body, quite easy. You see, the nostrils I think I could cope with. A bit of hand stitching, that's all right. There we go. So they're the inside arm and leg in position. Okay. And then we want to sew, I'll take this one. I find it easier to have, I've got the wrong body, there we go. To have this bit on top when I sew. So doing the other side, I'd start from this part of the foot and go around that way. But this side, I'll start from the neck edge. I just find it that bit easier because there are pieces joined on this side. I find it easier oh, okay. to have this than the solid So you can piece. manipulate them a little bit better. Yeah, and you see where around. the joins, there should be a turn at the seams and you can see the seam and you know to pivot there. Okay. It's, it's good, isn't it? These are the tips, aren't they? Which side to, to sew from that just make life a little bit easier. So I've come to the seam. I'm going to pivot. And readjust the arm and they should match up fairly smoothly and it doesn't matter if you take too big a seam allowance on this because they have tiny arms so <laughs> we know this for a fact the tinier the better do your boys like dinosaurs they do yes you know over easter you know the big dinosaur that's normally in the national um in the, national, in the um history museum is it dippy <laughs> Yeah, he's, he's doing a national tour and he's ah. coming to Birmingham. Have you got your tickets yet, Hannah? Have you got your tickets to go and see him? Ah, oh, we're all booked in. Oh, she has very fond, very fond memories of seeing him at the National History Museum. Who used to take you? Your granddad. Oh. I want to teach on an inset day. You used to go. Oh, fair. You see, these are the memories, aren't they? Maybe, maybe this is what you do. Go and see a dinosaur, then make one afterwards. Is this, is this why you, you, um, you love dinosaurs so much, Producer Hannah? Oh, no, you just think this one's cuddly. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, the bony one, it certainly isn't cuddly. There we go. I'm just going to sew along the front of the lower leg. There we go. Rearrange so that fits together. And then finish at what will be the toes. Okay. Or crown, as I like to call them. Yes, I pop the crown. They do, they do look like little crowns. But 
again, if you feel the seam allowance, you've taken, you know, not enough on one side, this bit, because of the stretch, you can just go back and take a little bit extra and there's no real need to unpick. And that's okay. There we go. I keep saying that his toes look like a crown. But look, there they are. It is a crown, it's his toes. You could make him a crown. He could be a party dinosaur. Well, he's Rex, isn't he, T-Rex? So Which is king. He's a king. Yes, of course. Oh, well, he... Let's try this one on for size. Yeah, oh, he looks like a, a, a maid. He looks, <laughs> he looks like he's about to come and clean your hotel room. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not. Right, at the end of the hand, just clip away <laughs> the excess just because it's quite a fine point and also clip into the internal V. And as you say, if you're using cotton, if you go on to make more, uh, you will have to do lots of clipping. Yes. Okay, so just, just, give just that bear that in mind. Turn out. Now, we've had a lovely message from Kerry in Devon. She said, hi, Natasha and everyone at Sewing Quarter. So After a really tough year, I felt like I'd lost myself until I stumbled across your channel and I've rekindled my passion for sewing. Do you know, at the NEC, I don't know about how about you when you were down in London at the shows, but at the NEC, so many people saying similar. Yes. Just just a, a lucky stumble, and, and, and they've joined us. And uh, I, I think that's lovely. So thank you for sharing that, Kerry. We'll feel a bit mush. Yes. Yeah, it's lovely. Because it, it's... Well, it's easy for me to forget that there are people out there until I get pictures well, of things Well, you mean not just cameraman? <laughs> 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 there are others. <laughs> Um, also, when you turn this out, don't use the end of the scissors in a rush because I've just put a hole through this one. Okay, don't, no, no, don't, so do, don't that. do that. Use a proper turning out free thing. Uh, someone asked about Derek the Dobber the other day and asked where they could get their very own Derek the Dobber. It's just a knitting needle. It's nothing fancy. Oh, we don't even stock it. It's just a knitting needle, size 12 knitting needle. 12 mil. If you can use a knitting nice. needle, that's got quite a nice rounded end because you don't want a pointy one because it will go through seams. Okay. Right, this section here, I've turned it the arm out so you can see. This bit here, we want to attach the toe piece across The crown. There. The crown, so that's the right way. So it just stitches straight across and that finishes the top of the foot. How are we doing time-wise? Um, so how much longer have we got left? About six minutes. The end is in sight. I'm, I'm hopeful. <laughs> we always say this. Uh, but you tell we put a little waistcoat on him. Well, like a Chaz and Dave dinosaur. Nice. Oh, Mr. and Mrs. Dinosaur. Oh, nice. What would what would the Mrs. wear? Would she go for the crown? Princess. Or a veil. Nice. Bridal, bride and groom dinosaurs. Bridal dinosaurs. I mean, nothing says love like a Mr. and Mrs. Dinosaur, right? <laughs> I feel I've missed a trick. <laughs> <laughs> you wait till you get married one day, Hannah. We, we will make you a Mr. and Mrs. Dinosaur. We could theme your whole wedding. <sighs> I think you can get married in the National History Museum. Who was it was saying the other day that they had friends get... Tim, was it you? Said that you had friends getting married in the... In the flamingo enclosure Ooh. this August. Who knew? That'd be brilliant. Who knew? Forget your country houses. Get in the flamingo pen. Right, so we've got the toes on now and the foot starts at the back. Remember to leave the seam allowance free. Right. Is that all in the instructions? Um, I didn't mention about the seam allowance, but yes, you need to leave. Although, actually, with this, you could probably. So I start in the seam allowance and just leave a bit of... Um, I leave the seam allowance free just so it gives it a bit of give. There's a bit more flexibility when you turn it out the right way. Okay. And sew this on. And again, this is where it's handy. There's a little bit of stretch, isn't there? So you can, you yes. can wiggle it. And it does the toe piece. It is mirrored on the foot. Uh, we've had someone who's messaging who hasn't given their name, but they just say, do you get um, eyes in the dinosaur kit and how many, please? Loving the demos whilst having a PJ day. Oh, oh PJ day. I love a PJ day. <gasps> oh, Sewing that... in PJs is the height of luxury. Oh, I know. But then I forget how many deliveries that actually I've ordered and that arrive, and then I just have to, I do have to say to my, my postman, I do own clothes. <laughs> it's just that I'm having a day off. So, you know, yeah. 
I even managed to do the school run in a very long coat and my PJs and a pair of wellies the other day. <laughs> Classy. Good work. Um, anyway, the eye question. <laughs> Sorry, we were, just, uh, we're just enjoying your PJs. Um, you get three sets of eyes. So you can make at least two dinosaurs out of the kit. So you, you're all good for eyes. Uh, you'll get a spare set of eyes. Um, but of course, remember that if you're making this for a little one under two, no, actually, it's under three, isn't it? Under three. Um, then they are smaller than a two pence piece, so embroider. That is your health and safety announcement for today. So it's just mirrored the shape on the underneath. So I've been around the toes and I'll just finish on this side. I think this machine needs a new needle. It could be sharper, but <laughs> it's fine for this. I am wrestling. It could be. There we go. So that's a foot on. <laughs> Producer Hannah's like, I need to make lots so I can have a dinosaur party. I'd give them. If I only had a friend that was having a baby. <laughs> she says, I don't know anyone. <laughs> I am one of the floor manager's wives. Is. Uh, <laughs> the cameraman's just had one. Uh, but apart from that, no, Hannah, no one. No one, literally no one apart from three of us in the building. It's all fine. There we go. I'm just tripping, trimming the excess off at the end of the toes. I think actually you can get away with not clipping those ones with this stretchy fabric. Okay. But I've switched over to the one that already has two feet in. And then awesome. after this, we want to sew up the back of the leg and down along the bottom of the tail. Okay. And that should all fit together nicely. We've got a minute and a half, Joe. Right, so I'll sew this. It's time at the end. I'm sure it goes faster than any other part. I know, I know, because you always say, don't you? I'm, I'm confident. Oh, I'm confident that we could do this. It's like, I don't think we've ever managed to complete an entire... In fact, I think this is probably the furthest we've ever got. And I'm being thwarted by the thread. No, Sorry. not thwarted by thread. It's... Okay, I'm going to go across and then I'll come back. Okay, I'll sort and that, this out. And then we might. We, the dinosaur. It's fine. <laughs> there we go. Producer Hannah wants the dinosaur. Uh, here we go. So, uh, if you would like to get the purple, is the purple still most popular? Yay! Here we go. Here's your purple dinosaur. And it's kind of a pinky tone for his tummy. Purple and pink. Looking good there. And his obviously beautiful teeth. Because we don't. We don't apparently want squiffy teeth. You can make at least two out of your kits. You get your stuffing, your eyes, your thread, your felt, half a meter of each of these fabrics and your um, instructions. Please do check out. I love how great these dinosaurs look in all the different colors. It's brilliant, absolutely brilliant. I love the blue. I think blue and white's my favorite, but then I just love that blue. Half a meter of each. There's your, uh, there's your teeth, thread, instructions. And of course you also get your stuffing, don't forget that. $24.99, yes, yes. Right, I hear the sewing machine uh, a clattering again. There we go, it's running much better now. Pivot here. Pivot. Let's bring the tail together. Um, Hannah wants to know, if this is her first soft toy, do you think that she can manage it? Yes. No pressure. It's just a case of getting, getting used to this fabric. Okay. But yes, she could definitely handle the pattern. There you go. You've got two and a half minutes. So that's the t tip of the tail that we've gone down to, is that right? Yep. So I finished there at the t stitched up the back of the leg and then down along the tail. So up, up the back there and down. It's great, isn't it? And then I'd need to do the same on the other side, but I'll just... Oh, and there's a dart at the top of the stomach that I've closed. So do you start one. from there or from there? Which end do you start? Um, I started from the folded side, just for ease. Okay, yeah. If you're going to start at the cut end, start a little bit in. Okay. Just so it doesn't chew. And then I'll sew so that we get... Because it's stretchy, it's only a small dart, but it's enough to be able to sew the head around okay. the neck. Okay. I'll do this super quickly, and then we've sort of got an almost finished dinosaur. I have to say, at this stage, it does look pretty much like, uh, for many years, how any toys in our house looked, because my spaniel wouldn't let 
um, a toy have stuffing. And none of the other dogs were allowed to play with any of the toys until he'd taken all the stuffing out, strewn it everywhere, and then he wasn't interested. And then the other dogs could have them to play with. Consistent, then, that they all had to have it taken out. Yeah, no, absolutely. So one Christmas, I think it was the first Christmas that um, we had everyone to ours, and, uh, and Stephen's little nieces had loads of toys. Oh, no. <laughs> and what we didn't notice was Arthur just sneaking in and systematically plucking off toys. We found 16 stuffed toys in his bed. Oh, that he, no. <laughs> that he, hadn't, he hadn't gone into them all, but he'd just, he'd just you know, just must be for me, just squirreled them away for a rainy day. Right, so I'm just going to lift this up and pivot round this last bit of the neck. And this I've taken a more generous seam allowance, actually, on this, okay. just to make sure it's really well secured. And this is where having that slight give in the fabric is kind of to your advantage, isn't it? It does help. There we go. So head on. I will and then look at him. He's almost done. If at this point, he only really needs that back bit sewn up, and then sew... The back of the head, the dark, down to about here, and then join the, the tail pieces to about here. Just leave that opening in the middle, sort of centre back of the stomach. Okay. And the eyes. Oh, we are so out of time. Oh, there's just stitching, little stitches here. Go back and two between the eyes and pull on the thread, and it will just pull them in. Okay, and give and them a little bit of a look. Yeah. Fabulous. Joe, thank you so, so much. Oh, thank you. Um, we're going to be back with more dinosaurs, but in poof form in an hour's time. Thank you. Thank you. Our dinosaur cup runneth over. Check out your baskets. Follow us on Pinterest. Search for our Sewing Quarter page and follow us to discover sewing work we create and love. We wanted to let you know that it's almost time to retune your TV to make sure you can keep on watching Sewing Quarter. To retune your device, you just need to follow a few simple steps. First of all, press menu on your device, or on some TVs this might be the home button. Then press settings and choose the setup option. Once you are on settings, select the retune option. Your box should then start retuning. Once your device has finished tuning, you're good to go. If you couldn't make it work, or if you have any problems trying to retune, visit digitaluk.co.uk forward slash retune. When it's all finished, you'll be able to carry on watching Sewing Quarter without a hitch. We'll see you on air soon. Simply Sewing is a magazine for dressmakers and home sewists who are passionate about fabrics and love to sew with stylish patterns. Each issue is packed with technical know-how, templates and easy to follow instructions to sew yourself quick wardrobe updates, accessories, plushy toys, gifts, bags and more. Plus, each issue comes with a free dress pattern from our expanding trend-led collection. We're proudly flying the flag for contemporary sewing with stylish patterns and beautiful photography to inspire sewists across the globe at every level. On Thursday the 29th of March, make sure you don't miss a Sewing Quarter exclusive when we're joined by special guest Susie Johns. Susie will be launching her book live on air with signed books available to buy exclusively for Sewing Quarter viewers a week before it hits the shops. Her book, Fat Quarter Bags and Purses, is perfect for helping you find ways to use up leftover fabric and comes with beautifully photographed step-by-step -step instructions. She will be demonstrating two makes from her book, including her roomy shoulder bag with contrasting fabrics and a bright bold lining. This make is a must have. Susie's also making an arts and crafts caddy, perfect for storing away those bits and pieces essential for any crafter. With handy pockets for needles, this practical carrier will even fit in books so that you're never far away from your next project. So don't miss this on Thursday the 29th of March, only on Sewing Quarter, Freeview Channel 78 and Sky Channel 678. Join us on Facebook. Simply search for The Sewing Quarter and like our page for the latest news and more.
Hello, welcome back. Now, change of pace. We've got a crisscross quilt. Do you want to see it? Let's have a look at it. Um, this is what the instructions look like. This is what it looks like in the flesh. Designed by Laura Pritchard, who is the technical editor for today's quilter. There we go. Um, we do not have that exact bundle that's on the wall, but we've got one that's pretty close. Yeah, we got that from the magazine. So this is the actual one that's on the wall. And we've got, um, well, just a variety of different bundles. Now, this one here, this is the closest in colorway. So you're after something that is, you know, is close in color, this is the one to go for. We've got some beautiful, um, beautiful art gallery fabrics in here. Two spools of thread. Um, so everything that you need apart from your backing. So front and binding. Look at that. Now, this is, uh, this is your Maureen Cracknell, isn't it? For art gallery fabrics, I do believe. Beautiful. So, a half a metre, a half a metre, and then a half a metre. This is all your art gallery. Look at that one. And then, a half a metre of your mercury, and then a metre of your spot on, and then a metre and a half of your... Um, ivory there we go so that's how this is breaking down because you are getting in total here five meters of fabric it's a lot isn't it but it's very beautiful i do like uh and let me just find the finish size finish size is approximately 47 by 57 inches there you go so that's the closest bundle to the one that we have on the wall maybe like me you love your aquas and those sort of cut yeah yeah, yeah, then why not go for this one? Again, art gallery fabrics in here, which are so soft. Again, designed by Maureen Cracknell. Look at this one. Oh, look at this one, producer Hannah. It's a veritable garden, even if I have got it upside down. And then the birds. That's your birds, your birds. Oh, now this one, this one is actually in the quilt though. I, I spotted that one in the quilt. Mm. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Um, and then so half a meter all of those half a meter of your um, spot on and then you get a meter um, of your duck egg linear and a meter and a half of your ivory that's how this is breaking down into five meters of fabric that's a lot of fabric plus your instructions plus your thread hurrah good stuff oh now something for the little ones so if you want to make this for your little ones. I say little ones. I mean, who am I to judge? If you want, if you want apples, you go for it. It's fresh and fun. Half a meter of your apples, half a meter of your linear, half a meter of your green there, half a meter. This was Fruity Friends, wasn't it? Yeah. Which was incredibly popular when we bought it to wear. Half a meter of your gingham, and then your papaya is a meter, and then your nude is a meter and a half. And that's $59.99. The difference is only in the fabric. The difference in price is only due to the, the fabric. You're getting the same amount of fabric in each and two threads and full instructions. And here we go. I'm going to take these and come over to here. Victoria, how's you for ages? Oh, no, how are you? It feels like ages. You weren't here last time I came. Well, you know. Busy lounging. Sorry about it. Yeah, with my PJs, probably. Um, now, this is the one in the magazine. Yes. This is Laura Pritchard's design. But, hang on, where's the one that you did? Oh, the one I did. Well, the part one I've done is down here. So Would this like is see? what it's... Here we go. So that one's Laura's, and this is the bundle that we are using. This is the closest one to those colours. You can see just a slightly different shade of purple in there, but ever so pretty. She's clever lady, Laura Pritchard. Well, I mean, she's technical editor of... It's of her job. Of a quilting magazine. It's her job to be so, clever. Yeah, no, it is, it is her job to be clever. So when we have Bex Reed on the show, who's technical editor of um, Simply Sewing, it's sort of her counterpart. Count, so yeah, she the does um, the instructions when we get quilts in the magazines. She will put all of the all of the instructions together so that they make sense. I'll check they work. So these make sense. <laughs> yes, they do. Hooray! <laughs> what a what a piece of luck. Um, what level quilting should I be at for this? I would say it's beginner's patchwork. Mm -hmm. It's actually not too tricky. The quilting itself might take a bit more of a glass of wine before you get going. 
it's up to you. It's, it's quite quite extreme. Extreme. Well, well, nice things. Speed, isn't it? Yeah, it does. It depends <laughs> on how complex you want to be. Uh, so but, it, but it is simple pat patchwork. It's the same block repeated over and over. I think the thing, I think that patchwork and quilting are two totally different yes, things. Yes, they are two totally different skills. Two very, very different skills. So we've got the instructions. We've got beautiful fabric. We do. Now we need to actually do it. Yes. So what I've done for today, I've prepped, um, I've pre-done three blocks so that you can see how they come together. And they alternate between a pattern on the outside with a plane in the middle and a plane on the outside and a pattern in the middle. That's why you're getting so much of the cream, isn't it? Yes. The, the ivory. Yes, because that makes up the part of the design. So, so you get a half a metre of each of the patterns and then you're going to get a, a metre and a half of the cream, of the ivory because you, yeah, you need a lot. Yes, to fill in those gaps. So to start off with, you cut out all your squares and all of your rectangles. So I've got here... We've got a rectangle. I'm going to do one block, which has got the print on the outside and the stripe down the middle, the plain, right. the, the plain stripe down the middle. So once you've got your square, you want to cut that in half across its diagonal. Right. OK. Now, that means we're going to be working with a bias, doesn't it? It does. So just be careful when you're manhandling your blocks and when you're pressing, just take care. OK. I'm just going to trim that in half. This is where a nice, good, long ruler makes sense. And a sharp blade, that's always helpful. So we're going to, you now have your two large triangles and your one strip. So to join these together, you take your long strip and just finger press that at the halfway point. Okay. I'm going to do that on both sides, just because right. we're going to need to do that in a minute. I'd, I'd avoid the temptation to just press across the middle because if you press across the middle, that's a line that you're not going to get out too easily. So just finger oh, okay. press those. Right. I'm going to do the same thing on the triangle across the straight edge that you've just cut. Just give that a little finger press and we'll do the same thing on the other one. Now this is one block repeated, isn't it? Yes, one block over and over, but you're, you're alternating fabrics and planes on the inside and outside. Uh, but what you do want to do is you want to make sure that e on each block you stick with the same fabric. So I wouldn't okay. mix and match this art gallery fabric with this one on the same block because you lose the overall effect. Yes, so which each, is lovely. Yes, so you want to keep the same print on each block so, like they have done here. You lose the effect otherwise. And actually what you end up, Ooh, what you end up getting set. is that lovely swoosh of your cream through there and then you get that mishmash of patterns going through the other. It's, it's one of those quilts that the more you look at you more you see, oh, it's pretty. Yeah, it's really effective. Pretty, pretty. Very effective. So we've got here, we need to join the, stri the strip to the print or the middle strip to the outside triangle. Okay. So we'll just m meet up the finger press line, the little mark that you've placed. And you could mark that with a marking pen if you prefer, but a finger press is absolutely fine. Because you can see here, this strip is slightly longer. So you just want to make so sure you've got a little bit of wiggle room. Yeah, a little bit of wiggle room. And will this be trimmed back? So does that give us extra wiggle room? Yeah, the whole block gets trimmed down in size. Okay. So you have got a bit of space to play with, but not too much. Yes, yeah, so you're not wasting off. fabric, are you? No. Now, do you get much fabric left over? Um, I don't know because I've only made a small. Oh, you've made. So a I'm not sure it. how Fine exact. Yes. Um, we've been and how close it is. Because I'm afraid do... I don't know. For certain exactly to get how five much. meters of fabric that's a lot of fabric yeah it feels like there's going to be plenty mm. well i can show you what i've got left based on what did i do i did three by four so i've done 12 blocks and that's one two three four five by one two three four five six so 30, 30. so i've done just less than half so this is what i've got left from my oh a load so you're always very methodical about how much you've got left. <laughs> yeah. There's an awful lot left in here, and you've folded these very, very nice and neatly. Quick, yeah. Quick rustle. Director <laughs> mm. Tim is being very rude and saying maybe you could give me folding lessons. <laughs> yeah, not a problem. Probably I'm available mm -hmm. after the show. There's yeah, basically you get a lot, a lot. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of fabric there's a lot here. in there. Yeah, there's plenty. Ooh. Oh, that bobbin doesn't look very happy in there. 
I'm going to take that out and re-thread it. So now we just need to press. Would you mind just turning the iron on for me? I forgot oh, to ask you that, that earlier. I can do that. I can do that. You throw stuff around. I'll everywhere. throw stuff around. You I'll rustle the, the plastic on. bags. I'll rustle. We're doing well. We We're are doing, doing very well. well. Uh, Susie Melding. Good morning, Sue. Does she need an extension table? Oh, good no, question. absolutely not. It's only for something that I'm going to show you later. Because something we don't often uh -huh. get to do on shows, we concentrate an awful lot on how to construct the blocks and how to put everything together, but we never talk about binding. So I thought I'd show binding, and it just is a oh, bit brilliant. easier for later to Excellent. look at binding. Uh, it's, just, it's just warming up. Just warming up. It's just having a moment. Just having a moment. We'll give that a little press. And with these, you're pressing towards the print. No matter whether the print is on the outside or the print is in the middle, press towards the print. Okay. Because that allows you to nest the seams later on. Ah. They'll, they'll sit more easily See, next to each other. I can never work that bit out. There no, and it's nice when you've got a pattern that tells you... It's done it for you. ...exactly what to do. I don't know why, my mind just doesn't work like that. And sometimes, for me, I have to almost make something or offer them up against each other to figure out which way things are yes, going to press. Yes, and then I have to take go, them back. Uh, and then go back and press. I'm glad I thought it was just me, but if no, an, no, if not an expert, at all. <laughs> if an expert is also, also having that. So this is where you've just got to be careful. You've got your two cut straight edges and just be careful across the bias just to try and maintain that, those straight edges when you push against the straight piece that's on the, against the piece that's on the bias. Under. And I've just done the opposite of what I've said. You know, we we stood and talked there about pressing towards the print. Well, and, I was, and I've just pushed I to was pressed against the. I was wondering why. Because uh, <laughs> I'm too busy thinking. Is that rain I hear outside? Oh, probably. Probably is. If we haven't had enough. <laughs> Press the wrong way. There you go. Oh, but you Hannah, no, don't tell me it's going to snow again this weekend. No, I'm not ready for that. Really? Okay. So we've now pressed that in the correct direction, and then we'll attach the other one on top. Okay. I'll just uh, place the two finger press marks up against each other okay. in the middle. This is all good. So you can see that's quite simple piecing that it's we're it's doing. It's come together quite quickly. It does. Then. It's really satisfying because it does come together quite quickly. You've got simple cutting because you're nice big squares. Yeah. And you've got simple piecing. The piecing's only two straight lines in order to create... A block, you yeah. trim it down and then you join the blocks together. Now you say, um, we say that this is a beginner's one, but I think sometimes if you've been working on something really technical and really intricate, sometimes it's nice to be able to just whiz something up. And you know what, sometimes I think the challenge isn't necessarily in the piecing, it's how you put fabrics together. Yes. And it's the, the, the joy it brings you when you put together fabrics in certain ways and what you can create with that. It's and it's half the battle. Like Beautiful absolutely beautiful and there's nothing wrong with doing something that's less difficult I just, I just think the overall effect of that is really really okay. stunning and it doesn't look like it's been easy no but I think that's because of how the color like you say how the colors yeah, go together the joy of effective yeah. color combinations makes it look much more complicated than it that's actually the right is. way to press it mm. yes yeah. so I am pressing the correct yes. way this time yes I just thought you had some sort of fancy schmancy way that you were going to like. <laughs> you were watching me something. going. What I was she doing? doing? This is it? All of our experts do things a little bit differently. I was like, oh, Victoria's or incorrectly. Going. Well, I, I would never say that. <laughs> You're not brave I was enough. Dragged up. Well, <laughs> <laughs> my mum would be very upset. She'd be straight on the floor. Oh, I didn't. Dear. I didn't bring you up to be so rude. <laughs> no, mum. Right. Now, which ruler have you gone for so today? So this ruler is super duper handy when you are trimming up large blocks. Okay. Because this block needs to be trimmed down. You can see here you've got all these extra bits and pieces on the sides. Mm -hmm. And that it's it's done in this way. Look, I've got some of Joe's dragon fluff. Oh, is that what it is? <laughs> a bit of dragon fluff. What's a bit of dragon fluff between friends? Oh, it's fine. Um, yes, it's just easier for cutting and piecing if this piece is larger and rectangular. So we just need to trim this down so that this block becomes a square that you can easily join with the other blocks. This actually gives you some really nice points as well, doesn't it? Yes. And uh, now the 12 and a half by 12 and a half actually um, was used yesterday on yesterday's show. Oh, was with it? Lucy, yeah, Lucy Brennan used it for, for her quilt, um, her hugs and kisses or hearts and kisses or 
crosses or whatever it was called. I missed it. Was out kisses and hugs. Yeah, it should have been kisses and hugs. Kisses and it, hugs. Yeah, because it was a take on her hugs and ki oh, no, anyway, I'll stop talking. <laughs> Show me what you're doing. So anyway, <laughs> for this one, we then fold the, just to, to make it easier to trim the block down. You want a bit of a guide to make sure that you're cutting in the right place. So I'm folding the block in half, and I'm just making sure that this point here where I've got the two halves of the strip in the middle, just making sure that they meet along that seam line here and here. And then you can give that a bit of a finger press. So that will give you a mark all the way along the middle uh, of that okay. central strip. Yeah. And then you can take your ruler and place that on, on that central strip. Okay. And the block needs to be cut down in size. The pattern suggests nine and seven eighths, but I'll be honest and say that I can't see the pressed line in this in this bright light. Um, I'll be <laughs> I'll be honest and say I actually trimmed mine down to nine and a half. Oh, did I you? Because I found that no, it was I found it quite difficult to get nine and seven eighths out of the strips. So I've actually gone for all of them at nine and seven, uh, nine and a half. But that's okay because that means as long as I've done that the same for every block, it'll all still fit it together. It will all still fit together. Yeah. It'll just be a smidgen smaller okay. at the end. So I've put the end of the ruler on the very end of this strip. I've got the solid diagonal line on the square ruler yes. on the finger pressed line. And I'm going to trim off this edge and this edge to okay. begin with. Okay. So Yes, you do have a bias there, but because you're trimming back, even if it hasn't, you know, if it's given a little bit, you, there's room. You're going to be trimming away. Now, if you've got a rotating cutting mat, this is a great time to use one, Super isn't it? Super handy at this point. So then what I've done is I've swiveled the block around and then I'm getting the nine and a half inches on this left side and mm -hmm. making sure that's here. And then I'm counting down to nine and a half on this side. And the creative grid rulers are nice because they've got, and I don't know whether you'll be able to see it, they've got like little corner marks. Yes. And they're bigger at the half inch point. So I'm putting that against the side, nine and a half and nine and a half. Does that make sense? There they are, yes. So there's your half one, which okay. is slightly larger, nestling in nicely yes, in the corner. Yes, this one here, here that I'll just move down into that corner. Okay, and then I can trim off the other two sides. Excellent. Okay, so that is your block. As that's it, that's as it, simple, simple as, that. as that. Simple as that, one block ready. It looks far more impressive, doesn't it, than... Super, and then when you combine them with the other blocks, that's when it starts to have more of an effect. And when, oh, you, nice. when you join them together, you always do... Um, uh, print in the middle, then plain in the middle, print in the middle, plain in the middle. Okay, and then so you alternate on the row beneath to make sure that you get that effect on the cross. And you just join these together in the same way um, that, you, that I would do anyway, is I would join together in rows. So right. I would join together the top row, then the second row. And then you can alternate which way you press these joining seams. So on the top row, for example, I'll press all of them in that direction, and then the second row, I'll press all of the seams in the other direction. I would have to flip that over, put that on top, and then and see, see which way to press, because yeah. that's just how I work. How you work, but that's all right, that's fine. And I would also have to double check once I've whizzed that away to make sure I'm doing the right Am side. Am I doing the right side? All these things, all these, all these room for errors that I have in, in my quilting life, and I have to double check. That's all right. There's nothing, nothing wrong with a bit of sense checking, a bit of double checking, that's fine. And then you can just place these together along that cut edge and then you join, make sure that these parts here are joining up. Okay. And we'll just join those together. So again, like yesterday's quilt, um, it comes together really nicely. So if you, you know, if you, you've got a friend, maybe you're making something like this for a friend, it's going to look really impressive, but actually you haven't spent months on it's it. Not hours and hours of cutting, because yeah. sometimes with more complex quilts, is you can spend an extraordinarily long period of time just cutting yeah. fabric. And it feels like you're busy cutting before you're actually getting anywhere with any piecing. And sometimes you just don't have, you just don't have time. I, I, I don't necessarily have time if I, I want to make a quilt, but I don't necessarily have the time. Do all of that. 
sorry, I'm just... Have you got a... Yeah, this is a rogue, it's a rogue bobbin. Oh, is it's it? It's not very happy. I'll trim that bit off and see if that helps. This is... We've had this this morning, so um, Jo had to turn her machine off and on. That's, oh, did she? That's always my... Um, that's always my, my go-to starting yes, point. Yes, well, it is, actually. It's always a good start. And unthread and rethread. Yes. That's always a good go-to. And this, this obviously doesn't ever happen here because we only use one brand of machines. But when people are using machines at home and they find a bobbin and think, oh, brilliant, I'll use that bobbin. Yes. Always be really, really careful because all bobbins are not made the same. And oh, they're, okay. they're not necessarily interchangeable in that you might find, even though it's a round plastic bobbin, you might think, oh yeah, that'll work in my machine. It won't necessarily work in your machine. Really? Even, you can get, even, um, like you can get a flat bobbin that's got a flat top and some with a slightly curved top. Yeah. And they're not necessarily interchangeable in your machine. So it's... So sometimes it could be even down to your bobbin. Oh, wow. But we're, like I said, we're fine here. Right, I'm gonna do what you said you do and just check. So I've pressed this top row. Cause don't take any advice from me. No, no, Goodness absolutely. Sense. It makes sense. So the top row, just to remind yourself, okay, well, the top row I've pressed this way, and then the next row down I'm going to press this way, which means that when you come to sew this to this, that these seams here nest nicely. I do have to actually turn it over to make sure that's... that's. You can turn it over. We won't laugh. It's okay. It's, it's just working out how things mix and match and go together. I'm still, I'm still at that stage where I haven't done enough to know for sure. To know for sure. And I don't want to make mistakes. No, because unpicking is the most Or repressing. Oh, I, don't mind, I don't mind repressing. It's the unpicking that drives me crazy. Because I sit there unpicking going, I could be doing something else. <laughs> so now we can put those up against each other. Ah, now, pin on the diagonal. This has been revolutionary for me, pinning on the old diagonal. Well, I always, I tend to these days, I don't pin this way. I tend to pin either perpendicular to, yes. or at a slight diagonal. But not like that. But not like this, because okay. I find that you have to take out the pins sooner than you would do if you had them this way, because at this point you have to take when your presser foot gets to, and I'll get the presser foot to show you. When your presser foot gets to this point, that's really when you need to be taking the pin out. But actually, this pin is holding fabric a good inch away from where your sewing needle is. Mm. Whereas if you're here, you don't need to take your pin out if you don't sew over pins mm -hmm. and you're a good girl. Mm -hmm. You don't need to take your pin out until you're much, much closer to where your sewing needle's actually sewing. So ah. for me, I find that's that keeps your fabric secure for longer by having it right. perpendicular to rather than parallel to. Okay, I'm with you. Does that make sense? Yes, yes, yes. Just my personal preference. Uh, but some people sew over pins, some people don't use pins. It's all about, as usual, just doing whatever's comfortable. Well, that's or whatever thing, works isn't it? for you. You know, it's, it's, yeah, exactly that. And then this is one great big block done. Yes, this is four, well, that sort of makes it sound like it's that quick, because I, but I had done three previously. <laughs> <laughs> now, on the one behind me, you would put then two of those together and then... Well, I would do the whole of the top one. row. Oh, okay. So I, I would sew the whole of the top row together and then I'd do the next row and sew that onto that. Oh, right. Actually, I'd make all the blocks first. Right. And then I'd shuffle them about and see what works. Do you have... Um a great big piece of wadding up on your wall so that you can arrange them because they sort of stick don't no, they? No I would love that but that. we live in a really old house that's got it sounds ridiculous very little wall space because uh, we've got a lot of exposed brickwork yes. so we have small amounts of brick and then a bit of plaster work and whatever and we've got a lot of pictures and we can never find places to put them all because the walls are a bit odd so no I don't I've got a really big kitchen table though so I tend to put them on the kitchen table I stand on a chair and I take a photograph well, no, everybody's got different ways, haven't they, of doing these things. Yeah, I'll stick them there, because for, for me, I think it's quite good to be able to see your work from a distance. Because when you're up close and personal, it doesn't always give the overall effect. Whereas if you can put it on your phone mm. screen and even step away from it and think, right, well, I'm not going to look at it for a while, and then you go back 
and you've maybe taken pictures of a few different arrangements, you look at them and go, oh, actually, that works. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for when um, I, I did a lot of a lot of art and things, and, and my dad always used to say, because he helped me a lot with it, um, if, if something isn't sitting right, spin it upside down. Right, OK. Because then your eye isn't trying to make sense of it, and it, it becomes more apparent where that discomfort is, where that right, disjointed okay. feeling is. Um, Producer says, look at it in the mirror. Anything that just upsets yeah, that's what nice. you're, you're used to seeing will then show and, and just highlight anything that just mm. feels a bit... Yeah, I like that. A bit and different. actually linked to that, a friend of mine used to be a copywriter. Right. And she said, when you're copywriting, a good way to do it is to read backwards. So not actually backwards, but read word, each word individually from the end of the sentence to the beginning, because you notice spelling mistakes. Struggle reading forward. Yeah. So I'll, I'll not press that, but that's how your block comes together. Do I have to do anything special with those seams all coming together in that middle um, point there? It's up to you how you want to do that. It's not terribly bulky, so you can press them open or press them to one side. It's up to you, but just be consistent throughout your quilt. Fab. And that is it. Let's have, a, let's have a quick look at what that's looking like on the back as well. So you can, you could, if you wanted, then that last seam that you've just done, you could press it open. Yeah, you could press it open if you like, or press it to one side. I think I pressed those to one side. It's up to you. Up to you. There you go. Fab. So once you've done that, you've worked out your arrangement, you've, you've put it all together, you can then move on to actually making your quilt. Well, let's have a quick look at yours then before we go back and look at bundles, because lots of beautiful bundles for you to look at. Now, this is, um, this is the fabric that you're getting in the pink one that's on your screen. Behind, behind, over there. Oh, right, yes, yeah, this on the screen. Here. Yeah, there, over there. That's it, beautiful. I um, get what you mean. <laughs> I'm Thank thinking. you understand. What is she talking about? Uh, but this is the fabric, and this is what we've just been working at. And this is the closest uh, colour-wise to the one we've got in the wall. Yes. In yeah. the wall? On the wall. On the wall. Even though um, the, b -b 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 the tealy one does have some of the a actual similar fabric. Feel. Yeah. It's got a similar feel to it. Beautiful. So for this one, um, I made a quilt sandwich. Oh, that's the same. That's yes, the same that fabric. one's the same fabric as the one that's in the one I'm on the wall. I'm just playing spot the fabric. Yeah. Nice. Okay. And that one? That one's in there as well. Oh, yes, those two. Yeah. Those two are in here. And then in the other teal bundle, did you say this one was yes. in? Yes. Yes. Okay. Right. So I made myself a quilt sandwich. I made, I cut out some backing, cut out some wadding. I cut each of those approximately two inches bigger than the finished quilt top. Right. And I just did some basic quilting on this. The quilting on this one's really lovely. It's, they're like, um, little scallopy leaves and the effect when you see it closer up is really lovely it's, it's a really yes nice it gives it, it suddenly you've you've got a different feel haven't you yeah completely? there's no quilting on the strips in the middle all the quilting's done on these on the triangles but this is why really we were well. saying earlier that patchworking is a, a different art to quilting yeah. because if you know i'm not a very competent quilter so it's straight lines <laughs> Um, but if but you know what, straight lines aren't that easy either, so don't do yourself a disservice. <laughs> <laughs> but if you've got something like your westerly rulers, yeah. you, could always, you could always go down those plain strips and, and add something. Now, what you've done with this, and I, li I like this just as much, is that you've done, you've sort of brought in yeah. more detail. I've just on done that. a simple diagonal line through the triangles, just through those, rather than going through, where are we? I've just gone diagonally across, the, across these sections here. I like it because it echoes. There's no one way. It's just design choices. It is. Um, we're going to look at binding in yes. one moment. So what I thought I would do is I would show you how to make bias binding and how I apply bias binding. Okay. Do you want to get ready for that? I'm going to go get ready for that. Look at fabric over there. Do we? Yeah. I'll right. look after the iron. Look after the iron. I'll look after it. Okay, so the pink one that we've been working with, that's the most popular this morning. Um, and it's got two out of the fabrics in the actual quilt that we've just been looking at. Uh, so here we go. Mooring Cracknell Designs for Art Gallery Fabrics. A beautiful, beautiful fabrics. Here we go, that way. So uh, we've now got less than 20 of these available. There we go. So these are half meter, half meter, half meter and a half meter. I love that grey, that grey purple. And then this is a meter and then a meter and a half because you've got a lot of, of your ivory in there. 
Yeah, it's very pretty. So you've got that. And then here's your whole kit. So five meters of fabric, your instructions, your thread, all in. Now, the one that has the, the gray, which we've, the other, the other fabric in there, is this one, which is in your teals, which is really rather pretty. So here we go, so you've got that one. Again, this is just a different colorway of Maureen Cracknell's designs. Uh, this one here is Barry J. If I hold that up, is that? Get that the right way around. There you go. That's your Barry J. So all um, designer for art gallery fabric, so you know that you've got that lovely, lovely soft based fabric there. There's your birds. And then look, that's the fabric that's in the quilt behind us. Yeah, it's nice. Very it's pretty. Uh, now, Victoria says you can fussy cut. I don't know if you can hear because I think a microphone's out, but you can fussy cut along those lines, which is beautiful. Uh, then you've got your pink spot on, and then you've got a metre um, of your linear there and a metre and a half of your ivory. Pink, pink, pink. There. And your instructions and your thread. All in 17.99. Now, maybe you want something that's a little bit fun, a little bit different. Oh, there we go. Sorry. There you go, that's your whole kit. Now, uh, maybe you want something a little bit fun, a little bit different. Why not go for your fruity friends? This fabric was so popular when we first bought it to wear. There's your, your little apple chaps. Half a metre, half a metre of your lovely green there with your linear. This is fresh, fresh and fruity. And then you've got your beautiful flowers there. And then you've got your gingham. And then in your papaya, you've got a metre of your papaya and a metre and a half of your nude. Um, and then you've got your thread. And here is your bundle, 59.99. If you're making this for a gift, as producer Hannah says, it's going to come together quite quickly. Now, wadding. Here we go. Because we're using um, creams and whites, getting the right wadding, we always think, is very important. Now, we've used warm and white because then it does make uh, those fabrics stay colourfully true, if you see what I mean. It's not going to dull any of those colours. So warm white, this is cotton. It's needled cotton. It's ever so lovely. It's 19.99. This is twin size, so that's 72 by 90 inches. So you will have some left over. Um, and it's, it's just, it's lovely. It comes in from the US and uh, it's, it's almost 100% cotton. There's just a little bit that just holds it all together and that's how that works. So that's 19.99. If you're after other waddings, wadding is quite a personal preference, isn't it? Especially who you're making it for or things like that or how you like to wash things or what effect you want once, you know, if you have you pre-shrunk your fabrics or do you use it? I use it, I wash afterwards so it all shrinks together, nice crinkled cozy effect. But again, that's all personal preference. So do check out the website if you want other. We've gone for this one just to show you that warm and white because we think it's very important that these colours stay true when you're working with delicate coloured fabrics. So that's why we've gone for that and that's just 19.99. So you're your kits have everything bar the batting, so backing and the batting. So we'll show you the backings now as well. Now, if you want to go for the nude, which is this one. Oh, they're in my trolley over there, Patricia Hannah. Should I go over there and get, oh, hang on. Here we go, oh, look, 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 look at this. Thank you very much. Here we go. If you would like to go for the nude, which looks very pink all of a sudden. That's not the nude. Ah, oh, here we go. This I know is nude. If you'd like to um, extend and get more nude for your backing, this is a per half metre, £3.25. Now, the finished size of the quilt, was it 47 by 52 or something? It is 47 by 57. Oh, 57. So 47 by 57. So, um, 120 so 120 by 145. Okay, we need to work out how much backing you'd need then well, for that. It says backing fabric. Backing fabric. 130 centimetres wide by 160 centimetres. One, so you're going to need two metres. Okay, two metres, that's four units. We'll get there in the end. It's all maths. Uh, now, if you would like the linear, here we go. So that's, that's in with this fabric. So if you wanted to have more of that and have that as your backing fabric there, then that is your duck egg, isn't it, in your linear. 4.99 per half meter, XCMY20. Now, if you would like to have that lovely green again, thinking of the apple one, then we've got that as well by the half meter. 
And again, that will be coming in at 4.99 per half a meter for your green. Nice. Now we've also got, is this coming in as cream or vanilla linear? It's the cream linear. They're very close in color, and when you don't have them to compare, it's sometimes quite tricky. So there we go, that is your um, cream linear. That would look lovely with the one that Victoria is working with at the moment. Very nice, very nice. Oh, there's lots to choose from, isn't there? Um, have you got the pink separately, or is that just... Yeah? Yes? No, you don't. Cheeky pink spot on we've got. There you go, there's your cheeky pink spot on. And again, that's in this teal one. So if you wanted, it would go with either, but if you wanted um, if you wanted extra, if you wanted to back it in that one, then that's your cheeky spink, spink spot on? <laughs> pink spot on. Get that right. And then this, oh, this is the lovely, is it mercury grey? Yeah, which is sort of a purpley, silvery grey. It's lovely. It's a very useful one to have, and that's 325 per half meter. And that's in the kit that we're using at the moment, the pink version. So you see that you've got that one, goes with that, that goes with that. Ah, oh, there we go, they're your options. If I leave those there, then I'll know where I'm at next time I come back to show you those. There we go. And I'll pop the nude back in that bundle so that I know that it's there. Oh, it's all housekeeping. It's like tidying up at home, isn't it? There we go. Oh, you need those. three-year-olds going to mess it up. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right. <gasps> okay. All okay. oh, right. Binding. Binding. Uh, the binding strips I've cut across the width of the fabric. So I've left the fabric cut in, uh, folded in half, and then I've just cut, for me, I cut two and a half inch strips. So this is straight binding. This isn't bias binding. It's not bias binding because you've, you've only got straight corners. You haven't got curved, any curved edges. Okay. So it's fine to just cut across the grain. Kind of saves your fabric, doesn't oh, it? Oh, and yes. it's much easier to cut. Okay, good. So I've just got a little sample to show you, and then I'll show you how I apply that with what okay. I've done so far. So I'll take my first strip, and, then I, and more often than not, you'll have to join your strips. Okay. Unless you're making a really little quilt, you'll need to join some strips. So how wide are these strips that um, you've cut? I've done two and a half inch. Okay. Some people like to do two and three eighths. Some people like to do two and a quarter. My preference is two and a half. It's easy, isn't it? Oh, two and a half. It's just easy to Bosh, remember. <laughs> you, get, you get used to certain things and it's just what you stick with. Uh, so the way I do binding is not the way to do binding. It's a way to do binding. So okay. I'll show you my way. See what you think. So when I join my strips together, I leave approximately a quarter of an inch overhang on each side. Why? Be because I find that when you cut, because what you need to do is you need to sew from this point here to this point here. You're sewing between these two points yes. on the diagonal. And I find that when you come to put this under the machine, you put in your needle here and it's easier somehow to get to this point here, I think, personally to go from one to the other. Okay. Because this is this can go a bit squiffy for me. That, that's where I find doing the little bit extra helps. Ah. So I'll take that over to the machine and I'm going to put the sewing machine needle just in this little square corner. It's almost like an arrow yeah. pointing to exactly where it, it needs is. to go, isn't it? It is. Oh, and I've got the wrong foot on the machine. Let's just change that back. Any effort. Many a foot. Put that back down. And we're back to the beginning. So you can put your presser, your needle down, keep your presser foot up, put your needle down, and then you can put the corner, that corner that I showed you a minute ago, right up against that needle. Oh, so you're already there. So you're already at the correct point. And by having that little bit extra fabric, it's going underneath the foot. That's genius. So it sort of has a bit more to grip onto than That's if you're brilliant. starting right at the edge. So it's just a little bit of extra help. Right, you've just revolutionised my binding line. Binding. And the nice thing as well about um, this Elna is the foot is slightly wider as well, so there's more to grab onto. Okay. So then you can, it's easier for me, I think, to eyeball then where you're going to at the other end of your binding strip which is, I can't quite show you that because it's underneath here, but you're aiming for, where are we? I can't quite. <laughs> where are we? There. Here. Yay. That little square here. Yes. Where we're getting to. 
So I can just go straight across, I don't do a back stitch. I'll just go for it all the way along. Get my thread caught. And what you with interest, we don't often get to this bit. No, we don't do it very no, often, no, do we? So I thought, really you know nice what? That we actually get the chance to do this today. So we've sewn across between the two little square corners mm -hmm. on there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to trim off a quarter of an inch. Well, actually, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to press it. You can almost see or not see. I'm not sure about that. There's a line of stitching there. So I'm going to press that and then I'm going to trim it off. OK, how come you press it, first? Just because oh. I'm fastidious about do. pressing. Yeah, I just like to have it pressed and it sits nice and flat. The stitches, it squishes the stitches down a little bit more. And I quite like that. Oh, so you're not pressing it. Oh, I thought you meant you were going to press it. No, I'm going to just... Oh, so you're just setting the stitches in. Yeah, I like to set them in. So I'll trim that off. And you can see you've got two little ears. You don't have to trim those off, but I like to trim those off as well. Okay. Okay. And then we can press that open. Because this is where sometimes mine is a bit wobbly. And... And it can be a little bit wobbly. And at the end of the day, it doesn't matter too much. If it's not 100% straight, it's not the end of the world because of the way that the binding is then created from this point forward. It sort of hides any little misdemeanors, if you like. I don't know what you mean. No, I don't know what you mean. So that's that pressed. At this point, once I've done all my strips, and I will sew all of my strips at once, and I'll chain piece all of them together, I'll then press the binding in half. And you okay. just go along the length of the binding, pressing it in half. This is where my cats get really interested. Yeah, cat oh. toy. They love it. Bat it away. Yeah, 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 that's exactly it. So that's, what, that's how I join the strips and you press them in half. And that's where we get to this point on here. So you've got your binding strip and that's here. So this is where if you've got all some pressed like stripology, in half. you can just cut all your strips really oh, easily, yeah, isn't really it? Oh yeah, really quick, super quick. Okay, so, so it's all folded in half all and pressed. folded in half and pressed. I tend to start attaching my binding along, I, on a quilt, and I don't know why, I always like to start somewhere around here. So sort of uh, two thirds of the way down? Two thirds of the way down on one of the longer edges. The seams tend to just disappear anyway, so it doesn't really matter, but I don't know why, it's just a habit. So okay. I've, I've started on this edge and I've left a long tail and you'll need that long tail when we get to How the other end. How long are we talking? About yay long. <laughs> in inches? How in long inches? Are we about eight inches Eight there? to ten inches. Yeah. Something like that. Yay long. It kind of depends on how much binding you've made and how much room you've left yourself. <laughs> how much you've got left over. How much room you've left yourself. It's a slightly movable feast. <laughs> it your can yay be. long. It's my yay long. <laughs> Very movable. So I'll start here. I'll work down to this corner and then gradually work around. So I've done these two corners so that we can hopefully get to a point where I can show you how I join the binding. Right. So let's pretend we're at this point when I go over here. Okay, let's pretend. So you start off, pretend this is where your tail is, and we'll pop that under. Actually, we're gonna wing it and not put the quarter inch foot on. And we're gonna... Do you have to change the position under. of your needle? Um, I might need to. Let's have a look. I, I love it when a guest says live on air. I'm just going to wing this I'm just going to wing it this. It doesn't fill me with, you know, it's fear at all. It's all good. It's all it's good because they're professionals. Yeah, it's fine. Yes. We can do it. So I'm just, you sew along with a quarter inch. You're sewing a quarter inch from the edge of your quilt mm -hmm. and you're just matching up the raw edges of the binding. Right. With, Having left with tail. With that raw edge. And this is, the, this is, no, your tail's at the other end. Right. Yes, so your tail's at this end. And you're starting off and you've got all of this. Yeah, that's here. what I mean. You've already oh, left yes. your tail. Yeah. And it's you're yeah. either entertaining cats or you've rolled it around a reel or you've done, put it in a mug or you've done something with it. So we're going to sew along. And what I've done is I've put the larger table on here just so that I can show you what I'm doing. Um, you need to stop at some point so that you can then go back in the other direction. And you need to stop a quarter of an inch from this new edge that you're going to sew along, right. the next edge. So I like to fold my binding back on itself. And, mm -hmm. and 
What am I doing? I'm doing it all the wrong way around. So I've created almost like a mitered corner. Does yes. that make sense? Yes, yes. So I'm going to do that again. So I folded back on itself and then down. So it just follows the line of the quilt. So it follows the line. So that stays on this cut edge mm -hmm. and then the binding is going where it's going to go next. It's traveling okay. down this way. So where I want to stop is you can see I've just made a little fold here. Mm -hmm. I'll be stopping when I get to that fold. Okay. So I'll sew down to that point. A few of you asking, um, do the instructions, are they available elsewhere? They are available with the kits today. That's how we've got them. Just so you know. And there's instructions in there on how to make the complete thing and how to do the binding and whatnot. No, so but I would nice say that my instructions are probably slightly different. And I know I've definitely cut my binding to a, a different size. I've cut mine slightly bigger. I'm just going to hand crank that down into the corner. When I've got to the corner, I like to lift my presser foot up, remove the binding out of the way. All right, okay. Turn the edge of the quilt, put the presser foot down, and then I'm going to sew diagonally into the point okay. of the quilt. Yeah. And then cut. Okay. Okay. So that there, and where's the best place for me to show you that? Yeah. So we now have a line of stitching that runs. If you just pop it down, you can, um, go from you can the get top. it from there. So we've got a line of stitching that goes all the way down this way. Mm -hmm. Let's see, is that going to work? Yeah, we'll get there, we'll get <laughs> we'll there. Get there. Going so, funny angles today. I know, it's just like, I like to make it tricky. So we've come all the way down here a quarter of an inch. We've stopped a quarter of an inch from this cut edge here. Okay. And then I've gone at a diagonal okay. down here. So from this point, we then fold the binding up on itself, mm -hmm. and then we're going to fold down on itself. Okay. Okay. Yes. So fold it the other way. And you can feel underneath here, you can feel this half of the binding underneath this top edge, so you can feel where it is. And you're aiming to start your stitching from that point. From that quarter of an inch up. Downwards. Okay. I'm going to go in a minute, and I like to just stick a pin in. as a guide. Place the sewing machine needle in, take the pin out, put the presser foot down and then whiz along. And then, because I've crept, oh, I'm going along to the next corner. Okay, so we get to see this twice. This we is do good. get to see this twice. Well, this is it, you know, there's no point in creating these beautiful quilts and then not being able to finish it off. I know that I've got a couple sat waiting for me to, uh, finish off. In fact, I've even got a cat bed that I need to just finish off and I'm hoping that we're going to get to how to then finish it, finish it. Turn it into a cat bed. <laughs> finish the very, very end bit so that I can The very end bit. How long have we got? Uh, we've got about five minutes. Mm, maybe. Come on, Victoria. I should have just left this one cat corner. This needs, needs doing, needs cat finishing. Cat needs a bed. Cat needs a bed. Which is my mum's cat, so when she visits, she has Oh, it's her own. worse when it's for someone else. I know, I know, no pressure there, no mm. pressure there. Lots of you saying thank you ever so much for this demo. It's really lovely, you know, sometimes our quilts are so intricate, we don't get that chance. So it's nice that we've gone for um, a lovely impact quilt um, and, and actually had time to, to do okay, this some because other skills. It's, those finish, it's those little finishing details, isn't it, that yeah. can make or break a project. Absolutely. Now, what I would say is that some people like to attach the quilt by machine to the back mm -hmm. and fold to the front. Mm -hmm. If you're hand stitching, some people like to attach to the front and to put it to the back and either machine stitch or hand stitch. Okay. It's, it, that's, again, I think that comes down to personal preference. So here we'll just do, again, like we did before, fold back on itself and fold down. So it's following the line of where it's going to go. Yeah. And you've almost created a, a, a mitre corner yeah. there. So we're just going to sew up to that point where the fold is. One more. Lift the presser foot, pull the binding out. Whiz it so, round. Yeah. So a quarter of an inch from that, bot, from that baseline that we've just spun around. Yep. Oh, and sorry. And then, are you going to sew out to that corner? 
Oh, you are right. I am. Sorry, I'm yeah. not with it today. No, that's okay. Don't worry. Uh, Rosemary said, morning, ladies. Thank you, Victoria, for that tip of the pins. Learned something new today. Oh, good. But not sewing into the corner. Well, the only reason, Victoria, is because this is the method that I do. And I think I learned it from you in the first place. <laughs> you might have So, uh, <laughs> there you oh, go. Me. We're all grateful for that. Oh, um, so, flip it back. Flip it back on itself. Flip it down. It does take, you know, it does take you a moment just to get your head around these things, I think, sometimes. Not Never do it in a rush or late at night when you're a bit tired. So I've stuck my pin in. Needle in, pin out. And then I'm going to sew, because this is the final side. Oh yeah, this I'm is just going to leave a nice big gap, maybe 10, in, 10, 12 inches. So I'm going to sew, I think, one and a half blocks okay. worth of okay. binding. We've got about two minutes. This is it. You should never ask a perfectionist to rush. <laughs> <laughs> Speeding. I am speeding. Go a little bit further. Okay. Right. Okay. Okay. So at this point, you should have two nice big long tails. Yes. So you want to overlap your, your binding. Right. And I like to overlap mine by the original width of the binding. Two and a half inches. Plus a quarter of an inch. Okay. So that on here, we'll call that. So that's two and three quarters of an inch. Are you happy with that? So it's two and a half inches. Yep. So I've put this end on the end of the ruler, mm -hmm. on, a, on one of the lines. So then I've measured from there one, two and three quarters of an inch. Yeah, 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 mark that. Line. Okay. So I'll then trim that off. <gasps> so check, yeah, check your measurement twice. Check your measurement twice. Probably could have done with a slightly bigger gap or at least put the join further up. So then I've taken one half of the binding right side up mm -hmm. with the fold. I've opened it out and then the next piece I'm going to place on top. Right. I probably should have done that further away. I'm going to place that over the top and I'm going to do ah. the same quarter of an inch overlap that we did before. Oh, I see. So you're, yes. you're creating another, another join. Yes. So we'll join it nicely there. Oh, that's not how I did it at all. Oh, that's I fab. The pins in and I should have done my join a little bit further in, oh, into the right. gap. That's would okay. have made a bit more sense. Like I say, you should never make a perfectionist rush. Well, it just means... That it just means that it sits a bit flat and it would have shown you a bit more that's right, how right, that would look. Worry. We've got a minute and One that's minute. it anyway, so don't, don't worry. Actually, so what I'll do that. is, what I like to do sometimes is just pin along where that stitching line is. Right, okay. And then what you can do is think, okay, well, that's where my stitching line's going to be. Mm -hmm. When it comes out and is stitched, Oh, so you can check. Have I done that in the right place? Ah, so you can check nice. to see check whether you've been yourself. too tight or too loose yes. to do that. So you can then go back and say, OK, that Fabulous. is right. I would say I've done that a little bit tight. So I'll just I think I probably... on. Uh, thank you. <laughs> no thank problem. you, Maggie. We're going to be back with some beautiful cross stitch. Yes, we are. A little bit um, of cross in stitch. A, in an apron. We're going to be back in an hour doing that. So thank you. No problem. It's lovely. Sorry about the mistake. Hey. <laughs> We're human. Right, let's have a look at these bundles. Now, the bundle that Victoria was using is this very one here. A uh, very popular. Please check out your baskets if you have this in your basket at the moment. So this is Laura Pritchard's crisscross pink quilt kit. Um, we have got half a metre. We've got less than 20 of these, so please check out your baskets. Half a metre, half a metre. These are Art Gallery, um, Maureen Bra uh, Bracknell. Cracknell. I was thinking that doesn't sound quite right. Uh, and then you've also got uh, your mercury and then you've got a metre and a half, uh, sorry, a metre of your spot on and a metre and a half of your ivory. So that's five whopping great big metres in total there. This is enough to do your patchwork on the front and your binding. Okay, now we've got um, similar fabrics 
different colorways here. So we've got the teals and your grays and your pinks in this one. And again, beautiful art gallery fabric designs. And again, this is all adding up to five meters. So all of these half meters, half meter, a meter, and a meter and a half, plus your thread. And of course, your instructions. Nice. Now, the last one is your Fruity Friends. Um, so if you're sitting again with this in your basket, please check out. Here are your apples, your green linear, your lovely green there, and your beautiful florals. You've got a nice gingham in there as well. You've got your papaya, that's a metre, and a metre and a half of your nude, plus your thread as well. 59.99, that's your bundle. Beautiful. Please check out your baskets for that one. 59.99. Uh, what do you want to look up to, Tana? Oh, next hour. Yes, we've got brand new fabric. It's all about the dinosaurs with Joe today. So we've got brand new dinosaur fabrics for you. We've got a different version of the poof kit that we had before. So we've got lots and lots to stay tuned for. So don't go any, well, maybe grab yourself a cup of tea. I'll let you do that. Uh, and then we'll be back in just a couple of minutes where it's all back to the dinosaurs. Join us on Facebook. Simply search for The Sewing Quarter and like our page for the latest news and more. Simply Sewing is a magazine for dressmakers and home sewists who are passionate about fabrics and love to sew with stylish patterns. Each issue is packed with technical know-how, templates and easy to follow instructions to sew yourself quick wardrobe updates, accessories, plushy toys, gifts, bags and more. Plus, each issue comes with a free dress pattern from our expanding trend-led collection. We're proudly flying the flag for contemporary sewing with stylish patterns and beautiful photography to inspire sewists across the globe at every level. Sewing Quarter have an exclusive, amazing price for our viewers on the Elner Expressive 920 sewing and embroidery machine. This ultimate machine is the perfect investment to help you enjoy sewing quilting and embroidery like never before with a range of impressive features to help you every step of your project. This ultimate machine is the perfect investment to help you enjoy sewing, quilting and embroidery like never before with a range of impressive features to help with every step of your project. This top of the line machine truly has the wow factor with an embroidery speed of 1000 stitches a minute and a large hoop size, making embroidery a breeze. The high resolution touchscreen allows you to create your own stitches and designs, and it also has an automatic needle threader for ultimate ease. The machine also includes 10 fonts for monogramming, 13 one-step buttonholes, and a variety of over 400 stitches. You'll be spoiled for choice. It also has an expansive bed space to allow for quilting and larger makes to make it the machine you can't live without. Elner Expressive 920 sewing and embroidery machine means you won't be able to wait for your next make. Head over to our website to find out more about our amazing exclusive price on this fabulous machine. On Thursday the 29th of March, we've got Joe Carter in the studio with a brand new softie. Jo will be on the show with her adorable mother kangaroo and baby, made from soft, plush, honey brown Shannon fabric. First seen in Simply Sewer magazine, this new softy is sure to be a hit with all the kids in your life. Jo will be here to show us how to make this toy family from top to tail and give you the tips you need to make these lovely characters part of your softy collection. So don't miss out on Jo's brand new edition on Thursday the 29th of March at 10 a.m. Only on Sewing Quarter, Freeview Channel 78 and Sky Channel 678. Love Patchwork and Quilting is the best-selling modern quilting magazine that shares your passion for fabric. We publish 13 times a year, featuring must-make projects, essential techniques, interviews, news and reviews from the world of modern quilting, Every issue also comes with a free gift.
on Thursday the 29th of March. Make sure you don't miss a Sewing Quarter exclusive when we're joined by special guest Susie Johns. Susie will be launching her book live on air with signed books available to buy exclusively for Sewing Quarter viewers a week before it hits the shops. Her book, Fat Quarter Bags and Purses, is perfect for helping you find ways to use up leftover fabric and comes with beautifully photographed step-by-step instructions. She will be demonstrating two makes from her book, including her roomy shoulder bag with contrasting fabrics and a bright bold lining. This make is a must-have. Susie's also making an arts and crafts caddy, perfect for storing away those bits and pieces essential for any crafter. With handy pockets for needles, this practical carrier will even fit in books so that you're never far away from your next project. So don't miss this on Thursday the 29th of March, only on Sewing Quarter, Freeview Channel 78 and Sky Channel 678. That's what that looks like. Uh, good. Hello. Welcome back. Now, um, the poofs are back, but not as we know them. Well, they kind of are. We've got brand new fabric. We've got dinosaur fabrics, lovely bundles for you today. Lots of you have been asking, can we have these in younger fabric so that we can... These are perfect for your kids' bedrooms. <laughs> Things like that. Absolutely perfect. So you can either do them with the foundation paper piecing, which are these ones here, and you get full instructions as to how to do that. You also get the filling, so that be lovely bean bag filling, you also get that in the kit as well. So we're making these, but slightly different today because if you do want to make it for your little ones, what we've given you is the template so that you can do a dinosaur paw. Yeah! There's your dinosaur paw. Or you could just make it into a cushion. So, depending on what you want to do. A choice is galore this morning. Now, this is the green option for you. Now, this is the first time that we have brought this brand new fabric to wear for you. Well, hence why it's brand new. Full instructions. And you are getting in your bundle. Look at the beautiful dinosaurs. There is four meters of fabric in this kit. Look at the dinosaurs, all over the place dinosaurs. And then you get the skeleton dinosaurs. And then you get a nice green to complement that. And then I believe that you get a meter of your stripe, a meter of your Vienna orange, half a meter of all the others. And that is your kit plus, 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 which is just down here, your template for your dinosaur paw. Now I realize it's only half paw, it's on this a fold cut line. Part of a part of a paw. And you get full instructions uh, so that you can do the English, uh, the foundation paper piecing and your filling. We don't have enough room <laughs> for all the filling for all of these, but the filling is coming with it. Do not despair, it will be coming with it. So that's going to be a, a, a good knock on the door, isn't it, when your postman arrives with that. Now, let me show you the other bundle with your dinosaurs. So again, full instructions and paw print. Again, more things, you just don't know that you're going to say at work. Um, and then here we go, these are your dinosaurs. This is scenic dinosaurs. Oh, these are brilliant, these are brand new today. Then some Jurassic foliage. And then, I love this one. Look at that. I really, you see, we're, we're looking forward to our, our trip to see that dinosaur. And then you've got, um, you've got some nice blues in here. I think that's the, is that the marine blue? I can't remember which way around it is. And then you've got um, your dinosaurs all over the place, a metre of that and a metre of that blue there. So all of it together, four metres in total. And your beans. Don't forget your beans. Two templates and your beans. Fabulous. Now, uh, we've also got just a, a plain coloured one in your, uh, your classic red, white and blue. So maybe you wanted to, to make it that way, then we've got that covered as well. So you've got your spot on in your red. It would look really nice in the foundation paper piece method, wouldn't it? Sort of Union Jack gone sort of starry. Interesting. And you've got your blue in there and your white, and then you've got a meter of that blue 
and a metre of your marine spot on. Do you want, sorry, Producer Hannah? Oh, we, have, we, we don't have as many of these as we do the other bundles, but that's 44.99. Don't forget, your filling and everything is coming in there as well. Oh, and your thread. So your foundation paper piecing instructions are all in here, step by step. When we first brought this to wear, what was really lovely was the number of you that went, I've never done foundation paper piecing before, but I'm going to give this a go. And you absolutely did. And again, this is, it's like Laura Pritchard Day. This is her design as well. She brought us the quilt in the last hour. And there are your templates for your um, foundation paper piecing. And off you go. Brilliant. Brilliant. Now, we also have a bundle of the dinosaur fabric. So if you just want the dinosaur fabric, then you can make whatever you like with it. So for example, if you just want to make, it, make some dinosaur cushions for a little one's room. Look at the stripe on the back there. Then. We are only offering this in the Mega Bundle today. This is brand new to wear, but if you want half a metre of each of these, so three metres of dinosaur goodness, for $34.99, you get half a metre of it. I think these are great for fussy cutting. So this is Macawa, so that means it's 100% cotton, 44 inches from selvage to selvage. <laughs> Producer Hannah wants to look at, they look very happy. The detail on here, so you can even see their little expressions. First time that these dinosaurs have ever been to air. I wish I could remember all the names, but I'm really rubbish at that. I think there might be a pterodactyl in there, but then um, Joe's son will probably tell me that pterodactyls don't exist. It's a pterodon. Who knows? This one looks like it's dancing, to be fair. And then you've got, you've got them in a more of a scenic situation. So let me show you this in a half a metre. So if you're wondering, well, how much exactly is a half metre? What are you talking about, Tash? Then let me show you. These are fab. There we go. That's how much you're getting for half a metre. So 44 inches salvage to salvage from edge to edge. Um, and then you're getting that half metre depth of fabric there. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. There we go. Now, um, what we've done, we've put, we've put the dinosaurs, as many as we can, in here. Um, there, well, there are a couple of other fabrics that we haven't managed to put in, in the bundle completely, but we'll try and get some more for you. So then if you want, but you do have the green skeletons. And my favourite, which is the blue skeletons. They, I love those, those really stand out. And then you also get your um, Jurassic foliage. So that's $34.99. So you're getting six different dinosaur fabrics. That's three whole meters of fabric there for $34.99. That is a great price. It's a really great price for that amount of fabric. And first time to wear as well. So don't, don't be shy. If you've got a little one that loves dinosaurs, and if I don't go home with some of that, I think I'm going to be in a lot of trouble. Uh, so there we go. That's what we've got for you today. Two different dinosaur poofs, um, a sort of red, white, and blue poof. And then we've also got your brand new dinosaur bundle there. I'm going over here. Hello, Hello. Joe. Welcome back. Thank you. Now, um, you have done a cracking job with this. And this is reverse applique on the, on the foot. Yes, so that the footprint is inset into the cushion. So it's like it's been printed in. I've done reverse applique. I like that you thought that far into, you know, heavy dinosaur in there, so that is reverse applique. So get out your duck build scissors for this. And it is, so it's recessed in there. It's just another nice little technique, isn't it? And yeah. you're gonna do for us today that technique, but on the top of the poof. Yes, just, I mean, if you wanted to do, make a poof for a child's bedroom or something, this gives it another twist. Um, the instructions have how to do the foundation paper piecing, but then if you watch, I mean, only on this show, um, have to do the footprint style as well. I think this is lovely because so many of you, when we bought the poof to wear, were like, this would look amazing in such and such's bedroom and da 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 da. And I, I think that this is just a lovely, lovely way of doing things. And, and it's great. And it's what you've asked for. So it's what we've tried to bring for you. It's a really lovely project, this as well. I have it on my to do list. I bet your to do list is quite long by now, isn't it's it? It's huge, yeah. yeah. Right, 
So this, to start off, we've got the, the template. Yes. And I've cut out, and in the instructions, you have the wedge, the foundation paper piecing wedge. And if you put three of those together, you will get a quarter circle. So that's what I did to get my template to draw my circle shapes. So I needed a circle of iron on inter interfacing. Okay. And then also the circle of fabric. And this one's great because it's not directional. So oh, it works yeah. on the top of the circle really nicely. Right, let me give you the details for the iron on interfacing. Uh, this is separate. Some of you have so much. It's like with the toy stuffing. So much. So, so many of you have this anyway. We don't want to put the price of the bundle up. So um, here's your iron on interfacing details. It's, oh, no, that's the iron on. This is just the, that's the, the fusible fleece. It's the 299 one, producer Hannah. This one here. Now your code for this is NXGQ17. There we go. It's 2.99 for a metre square. Fab. Okay. Now hang on. You're you're not interfacing the fabric before you go for this. No. This is. I'm going to. I don't quite know how to describe this actually. I'm going to put them right side of the fabric to the non-adhesive side of the interfacing and I'm going to trace on the shape onto the interfacing and draw around it and sew around it then in place and then bring the interfacing, cut a hole, bring it through onto the other side. So once the hole is in it, it's then interfaced, if that makes sense. I'm going to watch with I interest. might have to do it too. <laughs> That's a subtle way of going. I'm quite sure. Yeah. No idea, Joe. <laughs> but I will watch and await with interest. Okay, so these circles are the same <laughs> size. I folded this one in half and I'm going to use my pen. I've put the template to the fold and that's pretty much centered mm -hmm. either side. And I'll draw around this. I, see, I made, I did this a week or two back and mm. I, I really hope I've remembered how I've done it now. <laughs> yeah, because the instructions for the foot um, don't, you, you get the template. So if you want the instructions, you, you've got to watch Jo. That's why she's, you know, hoping she's getting it right. Uh, no pressure, it's fine. Uh, <laughs> but I need, yes, I need the full foot, so I'm now going to open it out. Oh, you flip it. Oh, I see, right. So it's centred, but then I'm yes. going to... Oh, I thought you were going to cut it out, that's fold. why I was getting confused. No, it's only it's only cut once it's stitched. Right. All will become... Oh, well, I hope it all becomes clear. <laughs> but you see, this is a, and also, if you're someone that doesn't particularly um, feel confident enough to do your foundation paper piecing, but you really want this poof in your life, then this is a great alternative. It is. Right, so I can see through because I want it. I've drawn the template around the template on the non adhesive side. Right. I'm picking up fluff wherever I go. But I want to be able to see the lines through it. And I, because this, now I have the adhesive side up, but I can see through and I can see the line. Which feels wrong. It, and does it feels feel like wrong. we're making a mistake. We're not. Well, I hope not. Well, we hope not. Yeah. That'd be awkward, wouldn't it? I am second guessing myself all the time. It does work. This does work, doesn't it? It does work. So, non adhesive side to the right side of the fabric. This is the sticky side. Okay. And then I'm going to pin it in position all the way around so it doesn't slip. I like that this is just because this isn't a technique that we do very often, Joe. That's why it feels a little bit, a little bit woo, a little bit wah. Yes. And it was just something that, well, I was given the fabric and, um, asked what, what I could make with it. And I thought there was a different scale of print on all of them. And I want some of the larger prints. I wanted a project that would show off the larger prints. Yes. So these dinosaurs and things. I wanted those shown off in a larger piece. Which is fair enough, because they are fab. In fact, our cameraman has already been um, checking out Jurassic Park t-shirts. <laughs> he needs a, a dinosaur fix of his own this morning. I forgot how terrifying Jurassic Park is. It's, it's really not, quite it's, scary. It's not a young family movie, is it? No, it's not. Right. Right, so they're held in position. And now I'm, the line I traced around, I'm just going to stitch on that line all okay. the way around. Right, perfect. Move your trolley out. We, um, we, for each of the shows, our guests get a trolley that they can bring their bits in and out of. And uh, you're just known as two trolley, aren't you? Yes. But I say, because Joe, for some reason, always has two trolleys. I spread mess wherever I go. So. <laughs> um, I'm, you don't have to have the walking foot on for this put, bit, but I'm going to keep it on just for ease. 
I'll boost the speed up a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're on a tortoise, let's speed up to hair. So I'm just following that line around and okay. it doesn't matter if I stray from it a little bit. No, no one's going to know, are not. they? I do think sometimes we give ourselves a bit of a hard time going, oh, it's not perfect, it's not this, it's not that. Nobody knew what you were aiming for in the first place. It's true. You know, especially if you're giving us a gift or something like that. Nobody knew what it looked like. So it's all good. I'm enjoying this. Um, I think this is, this is going to be a, a great one for your grandkids. Um, but if you don't want to do it this way, you could always just do your normal applique, don't you? You don't have you to could. do reverse applique. If this, if this is something you think, oh, gosh, um, not sure I'm ready for that, then again, you can just applique on normally with a bit of heat and bond. Um, or maybe you've got our lettering applique template and you want to put a name on, then there'll be no arguments as to whose it is. That would be brilliant in a bedroom. Well, it, it is. It's one of those things, isn't it? Kids' furniture can be really expensive. It can really expensive and, and I just think this is a lovely way of getting that personal touch with a fabric that they will love absolutely love and is fun and it's made with love and they remember that they absolutely remember that right this is the bit I really hope is going to work now well you know you and me both <laughs> right and now I'm going Where to trim out you? the center these always look like some kind of surgical scissors, but these are your duck-billed scissors. I have to remember they're not the full duck-billed platypus. Duck-billed scissors. Why are we using duck-billed? It just makes it look a bit easier at this point to do this. So they're sharp to go in. They are. Um, but if you use that, that build bit, it doesn't, it's not going to get too close to your stitching. There we go. So I'm leaving about a centimetre. Is that... Five eighths of an inch. Is that the conversion? I'm going to say yes. I never. I should have written this down before I came on. But you're just you're just eyeballing this, so just keep a, a, a consistent seam allowance. Or if you want to, you can draw it out. You can. It's. Uh... So I can feel the concentration. <laughs> <laughs> Smell the smoke. So you hear the rain, gosh. It's hammering down. Yeah. Yeah, but you turn it's raining again. Yep. It's not very neat, that bit. Let's overlook that. Okay. Okay, and then, so I've trimmed that out. And then into these curves, I'm just going to snip. Oh, can help? is the iron on? Um, I need the iron. I'm going to say... Uh, Yes. Yes, it is now. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do this bit slowly while it is. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Don't, don't while, rush actually. this. Don't rush this bit. Um, on the inner bit of the, the foot, do you, do you snip or do you just cut across? I'm going to take a few and notches you... out. Yes. There we go. Because I'm going to pull this through. Oh, okay, right. And that means that there's not a raw edge. Ah, okay. Now, whilst you trim this down, um, producer Hannah has a message. The fabric bundle by itself, over half of that stock has already gone. In the first 20 minutes of the show, over half of the stock of our brand new dinosaur fabric has already gone. It's going to become extinct. It will. Yes. Um, we brought you as much as we could. Basically, the reason that we haven't got all of the different fabrics in there is because we wouldn't be able to bring you as many of the kits. So we wanted to be able to bring you as many of these as we possibly could, um, which is just as well because half of this is already gone. If I explain you know, the process, then you'll understand where we're at. So $34.99, that gives you six half meters of fabulous dinosaur fun for $34.99, um, and that's three meters of fabric. Now remember, our PMP is done per day. It's just $2.95 PMP per day. So if you've already gone for the dinosaur toy, and you are fully dinosauring yourself up today. Firstly, we salute you, and secondly, your PMP is only going to be 295 because we calculate it per day. Oh. So I've trimmed all that, and now, just to make the pressing easier, I'm just going to finger press this open. But I'm, the interfacing will be pulled through, and then we'll have a dinosaur footprint shaped hole 
Brilliant Green circular top. Excellent. I like this a lot. I, I'm a sucker for a technique. I always have been. That's why I like foundation paper piecing so much because it shouldn't work. And I'm still not quite sure how it works. <laughs> but the magic but is does. there. The magic is indeed there. So this is the dinosaur. This is the green dinosaur bundle. And going across the bottom is the blue. Now the blue one is the one that we're using at the moment. So this one that Joe's handling at the moment is on the bottom of your screen there. There we go. So that is she there. Yeah, she's got her she's got her fabric there, beans ready to go. Right, for the sake of speed, but give these a big finger press okay. open just so you get the the shape of the now in footprint. this bundle there's some fabric in there, the the um the little mini dinosaurs on the dark blue fabric that we don't have in the big in the big fabric bundle, just because we didn't have as much, we couldn't make as many bundles. So it's there and that's fab. So maybe you want to get both and you want to like fully dinosaur theme up everything. It would, uh, my sons would love this in their bedroom when they were smaller. Would they not still? Are they, are they, they probably would actually. Yeah, in fact, being honest about it. I had the, are you bringing that cushion home with you? Oh really? Yeah. Just a slight, oh. So you can they see. They must think your job is great. It's a ridiculous job, isn't it? Getting to do this all day. It's brilliant. It, it does sound a little bit made up, doesn't it? As a <laughs> job. I'm a toy maker. Makes you sound like you're um, one of Santa's little helpers, doesn't it? <laughs> it does. <laughs> so then in a minute, I'll give this another sort of finger press out and pin the edges so they're even. But Give these edges a press. I'll get the dobber. Is it in the trolley? Just oh, to... I don't know. I, did, hang on. There, that, there, there we are. Now, um, whilst I'm in the trolley, this was, this was how the, the booths first came about. They were in one of the magazines, and, and everybody loved them, so we brought them to wear. Now, you do get in your kit, you get the beans to fill it with, um, but you also get the details. So if you want to just do your dinosaurs in this lovely star pattern, which is your foundation paper piecing, you can. We're just showing you a different way. Uh, so you have all of your templates in order to do it like this if you wish. And um, what I've also got for you today, because if you are going to do that version, what you will need, excuse me for stretching, Sorry. is your add a quarter ruler, which is here. Um, these have been out of stock for ages. So lucky that it's, we couldn't, yeah, this is the larger one. This is the 12 inch one and that's 15.99. But I would say my, my top tip for you is don't attempt foundation paper piecing without one of these. No, it's one of my, it's probably my favorite bit of kit actually. That really? Ruler. Yeah. And producer Hannah's gonna have a look at what date we did the original one so that you can look up. If you want to do that style, you can look up that demo. There you go. But you've got all of your instructions, your template and everything in there. So I'm going to give this a press in a minute. And the adhesive on the iron-on interfacing will mm. hold it in position. But I just want to roll the seams so that you don't see the interfacing. You only see this top fabric. I still can't do that fabric rolling thing. Can you not? I still can't do it. No, no, no. And it's one of those things that once I actually manage to do, I feel like I've arrived. I feel like, achieved yeah, something. I, I can now handle fabric. Yes. There we go. So I'll give this a bit of a press and then we have our dinosaur footprint shaped hole. Yay! Fabulous. You see, I think things like this make great alternative um, Easter gifts. Yes. You know, and then it's something for them to keep throughout the year because let's face it, grandparents and whatnot are, um, are possibly going to go with the eggs. Yes. Let's, let's be honest. And, um, you know, sometimes it's just nice to have, have something that they can keep for the rest of the year. It is, and this is much better for the teeth. Absolutely. Although I'm very good to my children, I will sometimes help them with their Easter eggs. Just for I the think sake that of their shows a generosity of character. Yes, I yeah. think so. Yeah. Oh, one year producer Hannah's mum ate her Easter egg before she's even given it to Hannah. <laughs> so, uh, so then, oh, so Hannah had to wait a whole year and soon she got her next one. Yeah, but you see, they, they sneak them out. If you haven't got your Easter eggs, they used to do great sales, didn't they, on Easter They did. Eggs. 
And, you know, I think too many people cottoned onto the fact that you could get them for, like, 25p the next day um, after Easter. And now they're like, no, no, no. They just take them from the shops. I don't know if they melt them down like gold and start again. I don't know. I don't know whether they just don't have as many because a couple of days before Easter, it, they can be difficult to get hold of. Yeah. If you suddenly think, oh, I haven't got an Easter egg for such and such, then try to find one. Do you know, this is the first year I haven't made my own. Is it? Mm. I might make some truffles. Oh, I love handmade mm. truffles. Uh, producer Hannah, uh, I, I feel like you've been quite traumatised over Rita, producer Hannah, there. She's, uh, she's also the one year they just left it next to the radiator. <laughs> <laughs> It's not good that was her. another successful, another successful Easter year. <laughs> Easter another. Oh, this year they gave her money towards a handbag. That's more <laughs> successful. Excellent. <laughs> Do you know what we've done this year? It's all right, you won't be watching. Um, two days ago, poor little freak. I have to say, my, my son is four years old, but he is the size of a seven-year-old. He's, he's huge, absolutely huge. And um, he's not the most coordinated because he's, he's grown so fast. You know, he doesn't know yeah. where anything is. So um, he's not on bikes yet, but he did have a balanced bike that he absolutely loved and he's had since he was little. Unfortunately, the wheel dropped off it, just <laughs> snapped off it. And he was so upset. He said, Mommy, it's because I'm too big, isn't it? And he's just so upset. Oh, no. <laughs> and it was just an old plastic one. And it's just, he was, he was scooting along. And then <laughs> the wheel's just gone. And it's just snapped. Uh, so he was very upset about it. So we have got him a new balance bike for Easter. So he'll be able to burn off all those eggs. Oh. Yeah, by scooting around everywhere. And hopefully this one won't break. I've gone for a metal one rather than a plastic one this time. It looked a bit more durable. Yes, a bit more chat. resilient. But he was so upset. It's because I'm too big. <laughs> See, my seven-year-old is more like the size of a four-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> no, he can come and borrow the balance bike yeah. with the perfect size. <laughs> now, we've got a big square of, um, of dinosaurs. Yes, I've cut this out at, I'm going to say 12 inches square. But you can say that. I'll check. Go on then. 12 inches square. Well done. A miracle. Um, I've pressed... Now, the, the iron-on interfacing is fused into place. It's larger here, so I'd trim that down in a little bit because I want it to this edge of the fabric. Okay. But then just place the dinosaur footprint so that um, the square's a little bit bigger, so I can jiggle it about and try and get... I think oh, look, get yeah, then you get him. In. A little happy face there. Or you can get um, maximum dinosaurage. Yeah. Yes. Make sure you get lots of... Uh, so there we go. Squeeze them all in there. <laughs> Direct Tim box. says he likes that one there. Just, Just a little, little, little face peeking through. And then smooth it nice and flat and pin into position. And then I'm going to top stitch <coughs> all around the edge to fuse these Bam. together. You could use a little bit of glue if you wanted to hold it into position. Because we want this bit nice and flat because we're okay. quilting later. Otherwise, we'll end up with wrinkles in it. We're quilting this. I quilted, in fact, I, I went for a dinosaur skin type scaly quilting got a, on the cushion. Hang on, let's have a look at that on the... Oh, there we go. Oh, look, yeah, you have. Oh, just on the, just on the foot. Look at that. If I lean that forward, it's not the easiest shot to see, but look at his, his scaly foot. Nice. So pinning around so it's nice and flat. So, I don't have to know. so actually, you could get your um, you could get your glue pen, couldn't you? And just you could that make might... sure that's all in position nicely. I'll pin this one for now, and then. All right. Whilst you do that, actually, should I'm going to go look at some fabric. Should I start top stitching round? How far out are you going to top stitch? As close as I can to the edge. But okay. But there's plenty of extra fabric to, you know, behind. This fabric is big enough that you can take quite a generous... Does it matter where you start? No. Do you start, start on, like on a, a straighty bit? Start on an easy bit. Yeah. So I'm going to start here, I in. think. Fab. Okay, we'll see what you've done in just a minute. Okay. I'm going to go look because apparently producer Hannah's saying things about stock. What would you like to say about stock? Oh, the blue poof, yes. We're in our teens for the blue poof. Blue dinosaur poof. 
So this has got fabric in that we haven't got anywhere else available. This is, this is the only one in which you can get, and let me skip forward to it, that, that one. And you get a meter of that one and a meter of that one. Um, so you're getting four meters in total here. So half a meter, half a meter, half a meter, half a meter. Meter of uh, fabric only available in this bundle and a meter. Here's your bundle. There you go. And don't forget you get your beans. We don't have the beans here because they're so big. But you also get the instructions for the foundation paper piecing. You also get the template for the foot. Now, the first time that this was shown was Valentine's Day. It was the 14th of February. Victoria Pete showed us how to do that foundation paper piecing. So if you want to do this rather than the foot, you can. You can. Um, and that's, so you just go to YouTube, put sewing quarter, 14th of February. Um, and this year, oh, wait, hang on, we 18 or 17? It's 2018. Oh, I don't know where the time's gone. It's all confusing. Um, now, the green bundle. This is your green dinosaur bundle. Look at these little chaps. They're looking good. Oh, you see, I would be... I would be fussy cutting these out for a project. Um, and then you see there's, there's your, your happy dinosaurs, your slightly, well, they're actually, they're still smiling. Even though the skeletons are still smiling. There's your green. You don't get this stripe anywhere else either. You get a meter of the stripe. Um, and this is all Macau fabric this morning. So this is all 100% cotton, so you can wash it. Obviously take your beans out first. Um, now, let's have a look. This is our non-dinosaur version, so maybe dinosaurs aren't for you, in which case we've got a red, white and blue version for you. We've got half a metre of your red spot on, half a metre of your linear red, half a metre of your blue, half a metre of the red, of the red, white, I'm looking at white, and then a metre of your blue and a metre of your marine spot on there. Maybe it's for a more grown-up version, for those, you know, those grown-up be bedrooms. Those teenagers, maybe it's perfect for that. And then our dinosaur fabric bundle, if you want a half a meter of each of these, uh, and, then, and then you're free to dinosaur whatever you feel, then we've got that one there. We've got half a meter of that one, half a meter. Okay, we've got less than 10 of these left, so you need to be quick if you want this, I'm afraid. The only way to secure these is to check out your basket that's the only way to make sure you've definitely, definitely got it. Love that. Half a metre and then half a metre. Normally, we would try and um, also offer these as a, you know, individually as half metres, but we just didn't have enough. So we will try and get some more, but, you know, you know. Now, we also saw this little chap at 8 o'clock. So if you are, you know, having a light, if you haven't quite got your head around the clocks, still basically getting up at three o'clock in the morning, not four. Uh, but if you haven't got your head around and you didn't quite manage to join us at eight o'clock or what feels like seven, you can rewatch the show on YouTube or later on on the website or on Sky when it loops around again. Ooh, boxing. But we've got these in bundles. And if you'd like the purple one with a pink tummy, then that's $24.99. This is your bundle. You're also getting three sets of eyes. This is enough to make two, by the way. Full instructions with templates and your super soft toy filling. And, of course, your um, felt in there for his teeth. If you would like him, but in blue. And this is the one that we made on there. He looked gorgeous. Then if you'd like to get the blue version and you're getting a half metre of your blue, half metre of your white in this beautiful soft fabric, um, then uh, 24 99, hundreds of these have already found homes today, which is lovely. Invite a dinosaur into your life. You won't be disappointed. 24 99 And that makes two. There we go. Top stitched around. And we How have neat. a footprint shaped window and the... Sorry, am I leaving cushions about? Um, yeah, I'm just wafting it around. There we go, looking good. And then I'm just going to trim away this excess interfacing around the side here. And then I'll fuse, I've got some fusible fleece cut into this size. And I'll fuse that to the back and then quilt the top 
however. Does it have to be fusible fleece or could it be um, normal quilting wadding if you've got some of that left over? It could be normal wadding. It's easier with the fleece because you can fuse it on and it stays exactly where you want it whilst you quilt. Okay. Um, but you can use normal wadding. Now, the fusible fleece that we've got is our H640. Uh, what were we calling it earlier? Something that 620, wasn't I like, was calling yeah, it. Yeah, no, that's 640, not right. And you can get it by the meter from us, and it is 9.99 for a meter. And um, with a bit of jiggery pokery, you've got the top, the bottom. And so you're, you're going to add it onto, onto there? Yes. Two packs of the fusible fleece will do the sides and the top and the bottom. OK. Um, yes. It's in the pattern how much you need, but you'll need two packs. of. You will need two yeah. packs. OK. All right. Lovely. What do you... Hang on, put your hand on. She's asked me to... I don't really understand what you want me to do. Put that... Should I put that on? Oh, there? that on. Oh, I see what you mean. She's saying put it on top. I was thinking, what the dinosaur, the what, the what, the what. Okay, so that will be. Oh, we're we coming in on on the. Oh, there, come on, there we go. That's how that's going to look. Yeah. Like a dinosaur. I get what you mean now, Patricia. Like, I don't really on understand. It. it does, doesn't it? it? Does. Fossilized hoof print, footprint. Yes. So with the other one, I, I then I only quilted to almost to set it down even further. I just quilted in inside the footprint. Nice. Obviously, Hannah says she'd definitely do a name. You could put a name around the bottom of the foot, couldn't you? Or, well, anyway, really. That would look great, actually. Yeah. yeah. Then there'd be a, a, no arguments over who it belonged to. No. There'd still be arguments. No, they'd it. find it something else to argue about. That's <laughs> fine. That's fine. Don't have that joy yet. <laughs> <laughs> What's the age gap between your boys? Four years. Oh, OK. And they still manage to argue? Actually, they get on better than ever now. Oh, that's good. It's, it's, um, it still surprises me sometimes, but I hear them laughing and joking together. And I think, oh, no, finally, we've got to the stage. <laughs> 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 it is a bit of that. Right, I'll fuse this on. OK. And then that's the top. So that's going to fuse on OK through the interfacing as well? Yes, it should do. OK, cool. Make sure I've got this centred properly. So the H640 there, adding structure, adding um, something for you to quilt against, actually, as well, isn't it? It is, but it's, it makes it lovely and thick. So super comfy. Yes. So your um, H640 is down the bottom of your screen there, and you'll need two pieces of that. If you want to go for this, you know, it, it's up to you. People sometimes have different preferences, don't they? So up to you, but we found this the easiest one to go with. Okay, and then I'd quilt this and then trim everything to size. Right. To fit. Um, how are we doing for time? Um, Should I go for it? Should I do a bit of quilting in here? Yeah, you've got about 13 minutes. 13 minutes, I can do a bit of quilting. Yes. We have every faith in you, Jo. What sort of pattern should I go for? This is what I haven't thought out, really. I might just... Whatever you like. I quite like the... Um, well, you, you I do might just go around like. the side, do a bit of echo. Yeah, why not? If I can find the pedal, there we go. This is where you can you can do your own designs, isn't it? Or you know, get some of your um, get some of your Wesley rulers out, do all sorts of squarely squarely things. Well, Victoria and I were saying earlier, Joe, that um, patchworking and quilting are, are kind of two very different. They are. Skills, aren't they? I know several patchworkers that don't like quilting at all and will always... Do they send away? Always send their quilts off. <sighs> yeah, I certainly have a stash. I have more sitting there ready to quilt. I like quilting mini quilts and smaller size things, but larger quilts can get a bit overwhelming. It can be a bit of a battle. I don't have very long arms. 
And I, I, Cher I'm needs a long arm quilter just because she doesn't have long arms. Well, I've got go-go gadget length arms and I still struggle. So uh, you're all right, you're in good company. I have to be in the right frame of mind to do with. <laughs> but this is the perfect size, isn't it? You can manage it this is. absolutely perfectly. Now, um, Hannah doesn't have a, a, a walking foot. Can she still do this? She can because you won't see the other side. So you okay. don't need them necessarily to be fed through so evenly. Okay, all right. So I'll leave that there for the sake of time. Okay. But got a bit of quilting. Oh, yeah, actually it's recessed it even further. It does. It's, lo it's lovely. It's so soft, this fabric as well. I could stroke it. Isn't it nice? Yeah, and it's lovely actually having that fleece, that fusible fleece underneath and so because uh, all top stitch there so that's all nicely encased no raw edges there and that's all beautifully encased giving that that depth and oh yeah so the bottom one i've made the bottom piece with this fabric i love this one as well yes uh, the, the, i love the color and i love how the the um skeletons actually yes and again it's not it's perfect in the circle because it doesn't have a set direction of print Yes. They're all sort of jumbled up. Perfect. So that's the base. Now this is your blue dinosaur bundle. Uh, we've got a green one, we've got a blue one. Details on the screen. In the green one you get this in green. In gr yes. Yes. I used on the cushion yes. for that one. And then the poof, it's, it, from this point on, it's exactly the same as making the star one. Okay. For everything. So these are the sides. I mean, I've really gone to town with the dinosaur fabric. Well, I as you should. It. Because, you know, have dinosaurs, we'll use dinosaurs. So I'm going to sew these. It says to sew the two side panels together. Right, so you've got one great long one. And the same with the fusible fleece. Oh, OK. So it's going to be in sections. And because I want to fuse this, I'll have it that way round. So adhesive sides together so that the seam allowance is on the non-fusing side, if that makes sense. Yes, that's not confusing anyone. I should have checked what the, se the seam allowance in this pattern is. It a centimetre? I should probably stop and know that before I do any more. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Hello, joining the templates. Uh, is it going to tell me seam allowance, shortened stitch length? Blah, blah, blah. Um, oh, hang on. Hang on, hang on. Joining the templates, quilting the top and the bottom. Uh, right sides up. Oh, I don't know. Where's it likely to be? Was it in the notes at the beginning? Well, you oh. think, uh, notes. Oh yeah, here we go. Yes, use a five mil. Quarter inch. Quarter of an inch seam allowance. There we go, that's easy enough. I oh, see that makes sense then, doesn't it? You see, that's because Laura Pritchard, who put this design together, she's a technical editor. So ah. it would make more sense that she did it like that because that's, you know, technical. I'm so pleased that we have the original one here as well. Beautiful. There we go. So when I fuse that on, I won't have the bulk of the seam. Okay. Do you want me to fuse it on? I'm Fusing. over here. I'll sew these two together and then they can okay. be stitched. Together. I shall prepare for fusing. They're the right way up. But it is, it's just the same. The only thing with this, because the fabric will have distorted slightly pulling it through, um, trim to the side of this fabric and trim this one down so it's exactly oh, the match. same size as okay. that one. Yeah. I think that's really wise, and I think with the foundation paper piece, it, it, was, it was kind of the same that we found on the show, that actually, whatever the size of your top, make the bottom one to fit. So don't pre-cut out your bottom until you've made your top, because then, you know, if you have taken a slightly different seam allowance or anything like that, then just, just match the top to the bottom, because you've made the top. That's, that's kind of your, your focal point. Yeah. And then you can just make your bottom one to match. Happy days. And you're sewing in a curve, so make life as easy as possible for yourself. There right, shall I fuse for you? Do you want to fuse? Yeah, why not? I'm here. Why not? So just match this up and then just go for it, yeah? Yeah. Okay, if you've got a pressing cloth, then you can do that. Obviously we've got them, you know, in the warehouse and out the back, but not one to hand. Which colour is your favourite bundle? Because you've used both now. 
I think blue it's this or the green? one. I love the. I love them both. I, like, I think it's the blue one though. I do like this one. The blue goes better in my house with the colour schemes that I've got. Yes, I think it would go better in my house as well. I've just Sometimes that's all, that, all it is, isn't it? That just that decides the decision. That decides the decision makes the decision. Now, when we get to that seam allowance, uh, that seam, do we then? Does that sit into the? It does. I've just finger pressed it open, so it will fit quite nicely. Okay. This is. I'm going to hand this over to you, so I can go and have a look at the other fabric brands. But I've made a okay. start. Thank you. That's right. Now uh, the blue bundle is that the most popular one still, Producer Hannah? Yeah. Here we go. Now, if you that way up. So you are getting a half a meter here of your scenic dinosaurs. If you have anyone in your life that loves a dinosaur, they're going to absolutely adore this. Uh, but you say, I love a dinosaur. We've, we've established that today, Hannah. We, we, yeah, we know we really like, that you really like them. Um, this is my favourite one, I think. This one. I, th I don't know. It's tricky, isn't it? Uh, yeah, like an archaeologist. Yeah. I went through a stage of wanting to be an archaeologist too, Patricia Hannah. Uh, and I remember being about six or seven and saying to my mum I wanted to be an archaeologist because they dig up interesting things like parrots. I don't know why I thought they dug up parrots. I don't know. Oh, you thought it was time travel. Well, that's another take on it. Uh, you, get, you get a metre of this one. This is the only way to get this one is in this bundle. And a metre of your blue there. That's your blue bundle. You're getting four metres of there, plus your filling, plus your instructions, plus your footprint. Beans in there, the lot. Uh, the lot. Now, if you want to go green, and again, this might just be down to what their favourite colour is. What your favourite colour is. Could have sometimes influence theirs. Uh, but with this one, look, you get the grey, you get the dinosaurs on the grey. Yeah, you see, I love this one because then you can fussy cut these. Could you imagine doing them a little lunch bag with what you had ever uh, had left over and fussy cutting some dinosaurs on? Um, and then you get your little mini ones and then you get your green, let's call it the archaeology one. Yeah, uh, and then you get your plain green, and then you get your nice stripy green. Again, that green, that stripe is only available in this bundle. And then you get um, your Vienna orange there. So that's all that for 50.99 plus your instructions, plus your template, plus your bean bag filling. Hurrah! Now, if you would like, maybe you want to do a more grown-up version. Maybe you want to, you know, red, white, and blue is very popular, especially in teenage bedrooms and things like that, then here is that option for you. So we've got a half a metre of your red spot on, half a metre of your linear. Oh, less than 15 of these now left. Um, half a metre of your blue, half a metre of your optical white, and then you're getting a metre of the dark blue and a metre of your marine blue spot on, plus your thread, plus your instructions, plus, well, uh, over there, that, all of that. You can even do your dinosaur foot because you also get that template in there as well. Now, if you just want a lot of dinosaur fabric, then we've got three metres of it. Only seven of these left. Only seven, that's it. That's my dinosaur. Uh, so half a metre of that dinosaur, half a metre of those dinosaurs, half a metre of your scenic dinosaurs. That's what it's called, scenic dinosaurs. Uh, then a half a metre of the green archaeology one, half a metre of the blue archaeology. It's not called that at all. It's probably just called skeletons. And a half a metre of what I like to call Jurassic foliage, thirty-four ninety-nine. Uh, those names, probably not actually what they're called, but like Joe, I would like to be on the naming committee. Lots of you have asked again. Please, 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 could we bring back the dinosaur? Here he is in purple today. He was on at 8 o'clock today. If you missed him, and he is uber... Oh, look. Yeah. Mm. Joe Carter design. Hello. 24 99 will make two. And he's got the red tummy, purple back. Unless you want to flip it. Um, and that's 24 99 plus your filling, plus your eyes, plus your felt. We also have him in blue. It's lovely blue, this one. And this is how we made him on the show, in this blue. With the white, with your filling, with your eyes, felt. Enough to make two. Pichano, are there going to be enough left for us to buy one each and then share? She's not answering. She didn't hear. Right. Everything's fused. 
Everything's fused. We're I'm all just good. Trimming this to fit. Next job is the handle. Oh, I forget it's got a handle. It's got a handle. It's got a handle because um, children like to drag stuff everywhere. Yes. Do you know, this is going to be really handy at Easter or at Christmas when you never have enough seats yes. for everyone. And actually, this is also going to be really handy for me when I get a little bit of I just want to put my feet up. That would be, it would be great. I, I, that's what I need one for in the... Yeah. So when the kids room. have gone to bed, we're like, right, <laughs> get their poof. My youngest would have up. poof in one hand, blanket in the other, cuddly blanket in the other. This, this will be what producer Hannah will look like. <laughs> Less of a tummy. There you go. Oh, yeah, when, when they have arguments and you send them to different sides of the room. Yeah. Just take your chair with you. Take your poof with you. Now, oh, what's this? Oh, this, this is the handle. handle. It's 10 by 6, I think. OK. Um, I've popped interfacing on the back. I'll give it a press in half and then press the sides into the centre. So this is like making bag handles? Yes. Okay. And actually, you'll have some leftover fusible fleece. And if you wanted a slightly squidgier handle, mm -hmm. pop a strip of that. A quarter of the width. So, is it six? One and a half inch wide strip. Right, yes. And pop that in, you get a nice squidgy sort of handle. I'll produce Hannah's because she's getting all excited. She's like, well, I've got my machine does alphabet. She's got a new machine, basically, uh, that, that does. Does, uh, does alphabets as well, so she'd be writing names nice. on the handle. That's Probably what... just hers, so that her flatmate doesn't, you know, think that she can share anything. Right, so I've pressed in half, sides into the centre, mm -hmm. and then I'm just going to stir sew down this side to seal it, and then down the other side to even it up. OK, so it, looking good. It's symmetrical. There's the pebble, there we go. Now, at some point, there's going to be some hand sewing because we're not putting in a zip, are we? No. The hand sewing is through the side. Or oh, down the side? OK. Is it? I've, I'll have to check the instructions. I'm, I'm so, I've suddenly doubted myself. I'm fairly sure it's in the No, side. no, I, I believe you. What I would say is having some experience of beans, and tidying up beans from having made bean bags and also my little tablet stands. Uh, make yourself a funnel. Yes. And then I just got a, a plastic jug and scoop out and pour in, scoop and pour. Don't ever think that you can just put the, the top of it in and shake it and then it'll all be all right because it isn't. No. And they're really tricky to hoover up. Yeah. They get so staticky, don't they? And Yeah. And actually, what, um, what I actually managed to get hold of was some like mesh stuff that you can put your beans in as well. So if you do ever want to just unpick and take it out and wash, yeah. should something get spilt, then you can just unpick your hand stitching, whop it out. There you go. Or put a zip across the bottom. It's entirely up to you. Yes. Yeah, holding them in an, in an, in an inner bag yeah, would yes. work really well if you wanted to give it a wash. That was a mistake I made the first time around making a bean bag. Didn't do that. Ah. Uh. Yeah. So I'd have to do at least one in a bag because of our cat. Uh, mm. um, I'll just check on the instructions where I need to place the handle, but I think it's over the seam. Yeah, I, I seem to seem, seem to think that's that's where it goes, just to hide everything, doesn't it? Neatens it up. Number 11. Place the handle right side up centrally down the centre. So, yes, over the seam. There you go. There we go. Shall I, are you done with the iron? Um, yes, I am. That's all done. Got two and a half minutes left. Oh, we've got a, a, a photo from um, from Moira, and this is her. Oh, look! That's so cute. Look at her grandchildren. Oh, look! Brilliant. Are they the chicks that she's made? Now you see that makes it all worth it. That's why it we does. so. That's isn't it? That's why we so. How gorgeous! Such a lovely photo. <sighs> Right, two minutes. I'm going to space the handle in position, and then it's a case of pinning the circles, one around the top and one around the bottom, and make sure it's lots of pins, well pinned in place, before then sewing them on. Wonder clips or pinning, or does it matter? Either, whichever method you prefer, really. OK. Wonder clips are good because they don't hurt if you catch your finger on them. OK. 
said with feeling there, Joe, it's like that's happened to you before. <laughs> so many times. <laughs> and it's not like getting your hands used to hot water, you know, when I, used to, when I was a, a kid and used to work in pubs and stuff and in the kitchen, your hands get used to dealing with the hot water. Not, not, obviously not a, a teenager, you know, not child labour. <laughs> but your hands do get used to it, but your hands never get used to being stuck by pins, do they? Ever? No. And... Um, Oh, it's a bit of a horror story, but it was a pin that I caught my finger on that I moved my finger out of the way and I caught it on the machine needle. So that is one of the reasons I'm not a huge fan so, of uh, pins. So, yeah, wonder clips, always a good yes. option. I'm an advocate of a wonder clip. Double pinning. I would choose where the top would be, so about there, and then I'd start pinning from there, but it doesn't really matter where your seams. It's not vitally important, but I would say, position the foot. Around about there was the top, and then mm -hmm. I'd start pinning these two together from and there you go. and bring them around. If you want to do the English paper piecing version, uh, no, the foundation paper piecing, then, then that was the 14th of February. It was Valentine's Day. So if you wanted to do that one, then you absolutely can. Watch that show. The full um, construction details are in. You get all the details, and then also, um, you know, you can watch back the show from the 14th of Feb. Um, and in Cheshire says, hi, ladies, can you wish my hubby a very happy 70th birthday, please? Yes, happy birthday. Happy birthday. Are you making him a dinosaur poof? That's what I want to know. Nothing says happy birthday like that. It does. Uh, right, we will be back in just a moment with a lovely pinny. Thank you. Oh, thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Follow us on Instagram. Search for our Sewing Quarter page and follow us to get our latest posts. Simply Sewing is a magazine for dressmakers and home sewists who are passionate about fabrics and love to sew with stylish patterns. Each issue is packed with technical know-how, templates and easy to follow instructions to sew yourself quick wardrobe updates, accessories, plushy toys, gifts, bags and more. Plus, each issue comes with a free dress pattern from our expanding trend-led collection. We're proudly flying the flag for contemporary sewing with stylish patterns and beautiful photography to inspire sewists across the globe at every level. We've got something amazing coming for all fans of Tilda as we've got a TV exclusive on Tilda's brand new book, Sunshine Sewing. We have the TV exclusive until the end of April, so get your copy from us before anywhere else and pour over Tilda's latest sewing creations. The brand new book features three full-size quilts as well as pillows, soft toys and fabric bowls, all made in Tilda's charming style. You'll be able to delve into 12 brand new summer projects and get inspired by her countryside themed designs. So add some sunshine into your life with Tilda's brand new book, Sunshine Sewing, available on our website now. On Thursday, the 29th of March, we've got Jo Carter in the studio with a brand new softie. Jo will be on the show with her adorable mother kangaroo and baby, made from soft, plush, honey brown Shannon fabric. First seen in Simply Sewing magazine, this new softie is sure to be a hit with all the kids in your life. Jo will be here to show us how to make this toy family from top to tail and give you the tips you need to make these lovely characters part of your softy collection. So don't miss out on Jo's brand new edition on Thursday the 29th of March at 10am, only on Sewing Quarter, Freeview Channel 78 and Sky Channel 678. We wanted to let you know that it's almost time to retune your TV to make sure you can keep on watching Sewing Quarter. To retune your device, you just need to follow a few simple steps. First of all, press menu on your device, or on some TVs, this might be the home button. Then press settings and choose the setup option. Once you are on settings, select the retune option. Your box should then start retuning. Once your device has finished tuning, you're good to go. If you couldn't make it work, or if you have any problems trying to retune, visit digitaluk.co.uk forward slash retune. When it's all finished, you'll be able to carry on watching Sewing Quarter without a hitch. We'll see you on air soon. Love Patchwork and Quilting is the best-selling modern quilting magazine that shares your passion for fabric. 
We publish 13 times a year, featuring must-make projects. Essential techniques, interviews, news and reviews from the world of modern quilting. Every issue also comes with a free gift. So in quarter have an exclusive, amazing price for our viewers on the Elner Expressive 920 sewing and embroidery machine. This ultimate machine is the perfect investment to help you enjoy sewing, quilting and embroidery like never before with a range of impressive features to help you every step of your project. This ultimate machine is the perfect investment to help you enjoy sewing, quilting and embroidery like never before with a range of impressive features to help with every step of your project. This top of the line machine truly has the wow factor with an embroidery speed of 1000 stitches a minute and a large hoop size making embroidery a breeze. The high resolution touchscreen allows you to create your own stitches and designs and it also has an automatic needle threader for ultimate ease. The machine also includes 10 fonts for monogramming 13 one-step buttonholes and a variety of over 400 stitches, you'll be spoilt for choice. It also has an expansive bed space to allow for quilting and larger makes to make it the machine you can't live without. Elner Expressive 920 sewing and embroidery machine means you won't be able to wait for your next make. Head over to our website to find out more about our amazing exclusive price on this fabulous machine. back at uh, this hour look at this isn't it stunning if only I could fit it but look at that cross stitch bees yes following on from yesterday's launch of your cross stitch and then there's another one on the pocket there Victoria's managed a little bit of magic there um, in a just a beautiful pinny love it now what we've got for you are the bundles so you can make the pinnies and the instructions for that in your thread. Then we'll talk bees. Okay. So this is your Katie Jane fabric. I love this collection. So, so pretty. So this is your Katie Jane. And you are going to get half a meter here. And then you're going to get a meter of the linen. This is lovely, lovely linen. Very beautiful. Um, and it just, it's just one of those beautiful natural fibres, it just feels lovely. So $21.99 and you're also going to get in there your full instructions and we've added a little something else in there for you as well, along with your thread. Victoria says that the, um, there is a way to get the best out of your fabric. So we've also put in there cutting a cutting layout for your half a metre. So that's, that's the best, that's the most... Um, effective way to get everything like you would with a with um, a normal clothing pattern you'd get a layout so we put that in there as well Victoria did that she did that all by herself just for us thank you ever so much for that oh now more of a classic feel here with a half meter of a maroon in there hang on isn't this out of the Devon County it is isn't it nice Devon County classic very nice. There's your thread and again a metre of your linen. So we're going to look at the, um, the, the ruchy bit of the, uh, of the skirt of the, uh, of the apron. Pretty sure it's going, it's the ruchy uppy bit. Yeah, the, the skirt. And then we're going to look at the bees. Uh, now, talking of bees, could this be a bee or is it just a fly? It is a bee. Oh, it's the frog, isn't it, that's got the spider in his tummy. This is your bee. This is your tulip pink bee. And that's 22 99 because then you've got your half a metre of your tulip pink bee and then a metre, again, of your linen, fab, thread, all your instructions. You're good to go. Awesome. Now, this book is beautiful. 
This is uh, the cross stitch garden. It, just, just beautiful. It's, it's like everything in there has come out of sort of Homes and Gardens magazine. It's just beautiful. I'm going to flip straight to the bees. There's your bee apron in there. It's got full instructions on how to do that. There's all sorts going on in here. So again, if you just want to do a, just a flower detail or a little sampler, then you can. It is incredibly beautiful. Oh, look at that. There's your seedling motif. But you also get all your cross-stitch patterns in there as well. And we've got some Ada for you, some 14 count Ada for you today as well. In case you're buying this today and you want to make some of these, um, then you absolutely can. $12.99, so XHSP52, so that you can be making beautiful things like your bees. And there they are, looking good. Are we, going, are we looking at the bees? I don't know, are we, going, are we looking at the bees or are we going, oh, there we go. Ah, there we go. Buzz, buzz, busy, busy bees. Hello. Hello. How you doing? Good, good. Good. I God. do love a bee. Sweet, aren't they? And this book is really, really delightful. Everything in it is just, feels really delicate, pretty, beautiful. And she obviously loves gardening. Yes. She's from Japan and she's drawn all of her inspiration from the garden. It's beautiful. Lots of beautiful little projects in there. There's just something so satisfying about going back to nature, isn't there? There is. And here it is. And um, just, oh, it's just so enjoyable. And so step-by-step -step instructions, different ideas, whether you're using it on a coin purse, and then all your different projects to start using your cross-stitch in. So my we launched cross-stitch for the first time yesterday. My daughter, this one here is a sampler. Uh, mm. Like a, a sampler, but it's been presented in a book of my seven-year-old who's never done cross stitch. Went, oh, mm. Mum, I'd like to make that. Can we can we make that this afternoon? Yes. Start with something smaller, Emily. Then move up to something a little now, more. Now you complex. see, this is it because um, <laughs> yesterday we had the William Morris. Um, yeah, she shouldn't hit start song. with that one either. <laughs> well, no, but you can because it was Ada. She's seven. And it's entire it's whole cross stitches. So if you can do one cross yes, stitch, you, you can. can do that one. You can. So it didn't like it wasn't like it had fractional. No. or anything like that in. So although it might look, it would look incredibly impressive, imagine if that's your first... That would be very impressive. And I truly believe this because so many of our quilters out there don't start with what I would consider to be like a beginner quilter project. They yeah. go all out for something that's really taken their go fancy. Go for it. If you can do one cross stitch, you could have you done that. You can do the lot. Yeah. yeah it's true. Um, now, if you want to put in some, uh, some little beads as well. Bit of texture. Nice. So beautiful ideas, all in the book, which are twelve ninety nine. Now the bees, which are on the apron, are there. I love this, but I have no idea how to make them. So that's why you're here. Yes, because this isn't a cross stitch kit. This is about either making something and embellishing it with cross stitch, or um, having something that you already own and embellishing it. But we thought it'd be nice to get the kitchen apron that we've shown before, but turn it into something that's just got the plain linen with the pops of print. No, I love it. this. It looks really smart. You're going to talk to us about ruching. Ruching. So we're going to talk a little bit about how you make the apron in a, a few different bits and pieces in terms of the steps that you would do, but we're not going to make the apron as such. But then I thought I'd talk to you about how you apply cross-stitch to a project that you're making. Yes. Because that's quite nice, actually, because sometimes you don't want a whole cross-stitch project, but you just want a little bit of a flavour. And that's where this book's really nice, because there are so many little elements that you could take, take out. out. Yes, And for if you're making a gift for someone who loves gardening, that's really lovely. That's perfect. Yeah. Absolutely. Even if you bought a pair of gardening gloves and just put a little, a little flower bit. on there. Yeah, that would be really, really lovely. Oh, now, ruch, ruch me Ruching. up. So the instructions, Victoria. like Natasha said, the um, with these uh, bundles, these kits, you get the... The linen fabric and a print. Yes. The print itself is a little bit tight in terms of how you cut it out so don't just willy-nilly go in and start chopping away. Um, I've done a cutting diagram for you. 
Thank you for this. Just to show you how to cut it out. Just to make sure that you don't get to a position where you've cut something out and then you've run out of fabric. So just We are normally mindful. so generous with the amount of fabric. We, we normally are, give you so was, much more, but there was no point in putting a whole, you know, a half metre did. Yeah, a half metre absolutely does it. And it's not so tight that you need to panic about it. As long as you follow the diagram, you'll be absolutely fine because there's plenty to go around. Um, and these on this side here, the waistband, they're cut along the length of the grain. And to be honest, it doesn't matter if they're a little bit shorter and it doesn't matter if the ties are a little bit shorter. They're not absolutely 100% accurate. So if you're okay. a centimeter out or half an inch out, it's no big deal. Nice, thank you for doing follow that. Follow that, that's right. right, end of time. So the, um, first of all, let's talk quickly about the skirt. So using the linen, it's a really lovely linen, presses beautifully, Isn't really nice. It? Yes. Really, really lovely. Not all linens are created equal. No. And some people have a bit of a fear of linen because they say of the pressing. For the pressing. Um, but this, this is a really beautiful one. I have, however, used Best Press. Okay. Because that makes the, the lines lovely and crisp. So I've used some Best Press and I've used, I don't think we actually have them in stock, but I used somewhere the pressing boards. What are done with my pressing boards? Oh, oh, those, oh, these ones. Yes. They're out of stock. So Ironing rulers. Show. Yeah, we can't show those. Oh, Chris told me I was allowed to bring them on. We'll blame that on Chris. If you've bought these previously, and then you can, you can use, use those. Them. So this is your best press spray. Um, we've got linen, we've got no scent, we've got... Um, oh, why don't you choose linen to go with your linen? Yeah, absolutely. So that's, that I've got, hang on, I've got, I had them all here. For, oh no, someone's taken them away. Uh, that's your linen one. If you're going linen for linen. <laughs> there you go, it's up to you which one it you go for. Sense. Lavender, linen. So with the, the skirt portion of the apron, I've cut across the width of the fabric. Okay. So I've cut a rectangle across the width of the fabric. The depth of the fabric, the drop of the skirt, if you like, is... It's kind of up to you. We've gone on this one. I don't know if you can see the bottom of it. Oh, you can just see the bottom. There you go. Yeah. That I've done as a 50 centimetres. Right. So I've taken so a half a 50, metre. Yeah, a half a metre across across the whole width of the fabric. Does this mean you're going to have lots left over? Yeah, there's a fair amount left over because the, the rest at the top. Okay. There's lots. The, the top of the bodice is lined though. So you uh, are using. Okay. There. And there's a pocket. Oh, okay. So, you, so you you're subtly use. using up the rest of it. You are subtly. So I've done, I've done that, I've cut across the grain and I've cut 50 centimetres and then I've turned over a double hem on the side seams mm -hmm. and, and the hem. Very neat. So I've turned those over, you can see that on there. Okay. Then across the top, you need to do a, a, a gathering stitch. The instructions um, say to do a one line of basting stitches right. across the top. My personal preference is generally to do more than one line of basting stitches. Why is that? I've got a couple of samples here for you that I did at home that um, where you can just see the, the slight different effect it gives by doing more than one line of stitching. So this one here is one line of stitching, this one is two and this one is three. And you can see that as you move on to the third one, those gathers become tighter and more uniform right. when you pull in those gathering stitches. I always find the risk with doing one line of stitching is that if that stitch happens to break... Oh, you're scuppered. You're a bit scuppered. You're a bit right. stuck. Yeah. So as a minimum, I tend to do two. Okay. But if I want something a little tighter and more uniform and neat, I'll go for three rows of stitches. What did you do on, this, on the... I did three on this you one. You did three on, the, did, on that one. Yeah. So do you pull all three when Oh, no, you... I might have done two. Time is of the essence. More than one. More than one. More than one. So while I've done that, so, and the way that I'll do that, and I won't do all of it here because it takes a while, but I'll do it in two halves. If I can find the other half. So I've done my two rows of stitching and make sure that you do your stitches within the seam allowance. And this has got a one and a half inch, one and a half inch, that would be very big, one and a half centimetre seam allowance. Mm -hmm. So I've done those two loans of stitching within the seam allowance. Now, why have you just marked that centre point? Because I find it easier to gather this half and then gather this half okay. rather than gather all the way along. And then it means that when you're pulling your threads, you're not having to pull them quite so far. Uh, and it just, it evens it out a bit better. Now, at home, I've just been making some pencil pleat curtains. Right. Basically the same. Basically the same. 
not far different. So I'll take, in order to do the gathering, just pick two threads, either the two top threads or the two bottom threads, and then just start pulling along. Yeah, this is what I mean by the same as you need your, same your, as your, pen, curtains. your, your pencil pleat. Because you've just got to work it through. You've got to not be in a hurry. Just take your time. And just work it through. And then you can just make sure, work out on your cutting mat or have your ruler or uh, tape measure or something just to remind yourself how far you need to gather into because it gives you um, information in the instructions as to how you need to gather it, how far you need to gather in. Yeah. So just work your way along. So it takes a while, but this is why it's important to do all your hemming and your um, side seams first, because it's easier to do before you've gathered. Right, yes. Okay? So you'd work that all the way along until you get half of your measurement is the right size. Okay. And then I would do the same thing working from the other end. But when you've got to a point at which you feel like you're at the right point and you've gathered correct to the correct distance, I'll stick a pin in In the end here, I'll stick a pin in there, and then I'll take the threads and just wind them round. Oh, okay. Oh, I've never seen pin. that before. That's clever. Just wind them round, and then whilst you're manipulating the fabric, doing whatever you need to, your gathers aren't very quietly creeping open, unraveling, because <laughs> they will want to unravel yes. and they'll become loose at this end. And it, another top tip this morning, which were you full of them? Full of them this morning. So, but it does mean that then. Once you've got that gather, you can just make sure that the gathers are distributed evenly. Yes. Because you might have more at one end than at the yeah, other. Yeah, this is it, where you want to, you can tweak it, isn't it? Because now is yeah. your time. Once once you've sewn your waistband on, you can't do that anymore. No, once it's in, it's in. And you might end up with slightly sparse bits and it's just not quite right. So if you secure that with a pin, you do, you gather the other end, stick a pin in that, and then you can just make sure that all your gathers are nice and even on the way that I have yes. done on here. So you've got your even gathers. And then no, that's you with your three, that. isn't it? This is where you, you that's love your three. That's the one I've done with the three. Yeah, no, I can see that makes, that makes a nice, nice effect. So you can just attach that onto the waistband as and when. Excellent. So the, the top half of the apron is made, is nice, it's nice and lined, so it gives it the, a double, um, double faced, not double faced, what's the right word? Double thickness. Right. Uh, and so this is a nice weight linen anyway. This it's is really this, it's a flax um, washed linen, so it's, it feels really nice. It has got a really nice weight to it, and it's it just when it's pressed beautifully, it just I think it's really lovely. It's a classic, isn't it? That, that's your Katie Jane that's bundle super. that we're looking at there. Um, we're working with the Tula pink bundle, uh, but any bundle, treat yourself. It, it's just it's just really lovely, and it's a timeless classic as well. I think. I think it's really smart, particularly with the, with the was it the Devon County? Was yes. It? Yeah. Very smart, very traditional. I see. I like the Katie Jane. Mm, hard to decide. Ah, decisions, decisions. Decisions. So the, the, so the bodice top. top. Oh, it does actually, doesn't it? Mm. I should have made it in that and coordinated. <laughs> so the, the bodice is made from a larger rectangle and then a smaller rectangle with a strip across the top. So okay. you just sew your top on. Do I need to put the iron on? Yes, go for it. So with the five eighths seam allowance, not the uh, one and a half inches, <laughs> one and a half centimetres. I don't know, you make so many projects, isn't it? <laughs> which seam allowance is which? <laughs> and when you do a lot of quilting, to go back to dressmaking, you have to actually it's really, concentrate, yeah, don't you? Think, hold on a minute. And it's suddenly that seam allowance that you've worked with most of your life suddenly looks really big. Yes. You think, wow, what, how generous is that? So we can give that a bit of a press. Any second now. Any second now. Any second now. I said to Chris, I'd Oh, are you going to, you're going to have a quick spritz, are you? I was tempted. Yeah, why not? Go why for it. Not? Go for it. I'm just rearranging. We should rearrange. There we go. Yeah, and there you go. Okay. And that's all it's it is, isn't it? One. Is is a, a, a quick spray. Misting. A miss it. Oh, misting. misting. There we go. Now, with your best press, um, 
it, it, it lasts and lasts and lasts. I mean, we've had this bottle since we started <laughs> over a year ago. Um, the nice thing about it, it doesn't leave a residue. So some starch-based sprays will leave a residue. Mm, like a white... Uh, crusty look on it. Uh, it doesn't do that. Um, if you've got one that's scented, it smells great. If you haven't, then that's your preference. Fine, it still works brilliantly. Uh, and it's just one of those things that's really, really handy. It puts texture back into your fabric. You know when you, get, you first get your, your fabric and it's, it's got a certain amount of texture, then you wash it and it goes all lovely and soft. But sometimes you just want that texture back in it to make it easier to work with. That's what this is going to do. Yeah, and um, I think sometimes when you're doing complex construction, when dressmaking, sometimes that little bit of extra structure helps when you're trying to put things together. And it will wash out again. But if it's going to help you, um, and especially if you're working with a, a more delicate fabric or something like that, best press it up. <laughs> best press it up. So then we take, that's your bodice constructed with a, the top band right. and the yes. lower section. And then at this point, you place the two pieces right sides together. And then the instructions tell you, I think they say to measure half the halfway point and then mark 13 and a half centimetres from that halfway point to mark a line. So I'll grab my pen and... You'd like a ruler now, wouldn't yeah. you? I don't know what I've done with my ruler. I think oh. I lent it to Joe. Disgraceful. Can we use the mat? You know what? We can wing it because I'm not going to do anything with it from this point onwards. You would just... Let's go for a 20, 20 inch in the middle. And let's go, let's go one and a half inches in from each side. And what's this marker for? So what we're doing is we're taking it from a rectangle and turning it into something that's got a nice shape on the oh, side. Oh, I see. Because otherwise this would come up here and be quite rectangular. Be so it's just bringing it in a little bit, just to give it a little bit of shape. Mm, yeah, you are going to need a ruler. No, nope, I'm not. I'm going to wing it. Not. What? What? It's crazy talk. No, okay. Unless you are a professional, please don't... Don't do this. ...cut without a ruler. It's almost straight, not quite. Do you know what? We can get you a ruler. It's all right. Because it's just to show a vague idea of what we're going to... what you're aiming for. I'm going to go slight this way. All right, gosh. Get yourself a ruler at home. Get a ruler. Do it, do it so that you, because it's only going to take one little slip and you know, you've got to knock out your fabric. Um, Victoria's obviously being pro. I'm really not, it's not that straight. <laughs> okay, so if you squint when you look at the TV, you'll say I've created a nice trapezoid. Let's say that. Trapezoid. So at this point, you would sew around the outsides using the same seam allowance. But not this bit but not here, this leave bit the here. face, okay. However, if you are looking to attach some bees, you would do that before you attach the two together. Oh, so now is your bee moment. I think so. You don't have to, you could do it afterwards, but you know what, I think it's nice that you can't see all the back of your stitching on the inside Magic of the apron. Magic bees, right, so. I think that's super neat. Before we bee, before we be, I'm gonna go look at the fabrics. Don't be long. I won't be long, I will be back. <sighs> Before you know. Ha ha. <gasps> Awful. No, the Katie Jane bundle. Less than 10 of these left. Uh, the fabric is 100% cotton here, but then you've got your flax washed linen. Beautiful. A metre, half a metre. You get your thread as well, and then you get your instructions for your, uh, for your pinny, and then you also get your, um, your layout guide, cutting out guide that Victoria has added in because she can. $21.99, fab. Which, for an item that you're going to keep and wear and wear and wear and wear, fab. This is your Devon County, super posh. This is your Devon County. Here's your next one, half a metre here. And then again, a metre of that beautiful linen. And we've just seen how beautifully that irons up and how gorgeous that is to work with. Your thread, full instructions. Layout template again, all in there for $24.99. And then the last one, this is the one that we've been working with this morning, which is your bees, your tulip pink bees. You see, this is lovely, isn't it? See, you get that little snippet of tulip, just, you know, casually. Love it. And a metre of your linen, and again, instructions, thread, 
everything you are good to go 22.99 lovely lovely um, and the book where we're going to be having a look at your bees in here this is all about your cross stitch over half of these have already been checked out and gone that's not just sitting in people's baskets that's actually checked out because you don't want to miss out on it and gone um, that is the cross stitch garden very very beautiful book we will have a look at that in more detail now if you love your cross stitch yesterday big day on sewing quarter after being on air for over a year we have now ventured into the wonderful world of cross stitch and yesterday we launched that for the first time so of course it seems only right to give you an option of trying out some magazines so if you head to our, our normal launch page when you get to the website www.sewingquarter.com um, the bit that the bit that spins around next to me there I'm not spinning around the magazine you'll get to one that says magazines and that has the UK's best-selling cross-stitch magazines in there. Um, there are three versions. There's cross-stitch crazy, which is your sort of entry-level um, fun and funky one. And then you've got your, um, your world of cross-stitch, which is your, small, your shorter projects, but you've also got intermediate longer ones. So it's, it's a nice midway, midway house. And then your cross-stitch gold, which is like, you know, you're a pro at this. Some big, big projects in there. And you can try one two three or any of them three issues for five pounds that's such a good deal it's such a good deal and, and that will start with the next edition so you'll get the next edition through your door of the one that you pick obviously not it's not one of each so you'd go for you know maybe cross stitch crazy we had the editor lovely rachel of cross stitch crazy uh -huh. yesterday she's great fun um and so you pick which one you want off you go so exciting well, they're receiving magazines in the post each. And you're getting deal. three to try for five pounds. There you go. Happy days. Happy days indeed. Uh, now the Ada's out. Ada's out. Hi, Hi Ada. Ada. Hi, Ada. Now, um, I thought it was a dishcloth. <laughs> no, this is your. It does. It looks a bit like a dishcloth. Yeah, before you wet it. Before yeah, you know, when but it's you first fresh get out them. the packet. But it's not. This is your 14 count Ada in plain blue. Um, Plain blue, you're going to be able to see it, aren't you? Yes, and I thought it would show up what we're trying to demonstrate on here. Now, 30 centimetres by 45 centimetres. We've got different ones on the website, so have a look there. But for today, we're going with this. Now, 14 count means that you get 14 holes for every inch. Correct. If you choose an 11 count, you get 11 holes per inch. Therefore, your design is bigger. Larger, yes. And if you go the other way, then your design gets smaller, more yes. intricate. So you can actually use whichever count you like in order to do this piece of work. But I've chosen 14 because 14, generally speaking, tends to be the most popular. A basic. lot of our kits yesterday were, were 14 count Ada and then we had the 28 count even weave. So yeah, they correlate. Same bit different. Yeah. Same bit different. So what I've done is they say to use some waste canvas, but essentially they just mean a spare bit of not it's not like a special thing. So you don't need to go shopping for waste canvas. Okay. You're just choosing what you've got. So I, I've just, what I've done is I've taken on the design, I've photocopied here just so that it's easier than looking in the book. So I've, this is the page here. Um, and she's got here three different B pictures, three mm -hmm. different Bs. Um, and I've put two of them on the top of the apron sample here and I've put one on the pocket. Because I nice. thought it looks quite nice on the pocket. Yes, it looks fab. And again, I've stitched that on the pocket before I've made the pocket so that the stitching is hidden on the inside. So pick a B, any B. Pick a B, any B. We're going to pick BB. BB, B, excellent. Not AB, not CB, but BB. BB, right. We're going for BB. And cunningly, um, the, the pictures in the book are shown on 14 count. So to I've, scale yeah, 14 counts. Yeah, they're shown counts. pretty much to scale. So what I've done is I've cut, cut a piece of the 14 count Ada in the size that the B is shown okay. on. So yep. that then I've got quite a good representation of how big that B is going to be. How big the B is going to be. Yes, no one with you. On, yep. Yep. on yep. the finished item. So then you can take that and then you can position it on your apron or you know at the top or on the pocket wherever okay. you'd like that to be so this isn't this this is just a sample this size a this sample. would be on your apron or on your purse or whatever it is that you are embellishing with be. your cross or on your gardening glove or your gardening glove yes might be a bit tricky to Why cross stitch through you never know depends what it's made from so for, so what i what i've done there next is i've just basted that in place because okay. i find that easier 
then I know exactly what angle the B is going to be at, and I know that the aid is not going to move okay. when I'm stitching. Okay. Now, ordinarily, when you are stitching with cross stitch, the needle that you use is quite blunt because the holes in the aider are quite a decent size. And they're already there, aren't they? You're not having to pierce yes. anything. But if you are stitching through onto another fabric, you mm. need a sharper needle. Okay, we've got hand needles for you on the show today. I've got hand needles for embroidering cruel. I've got um, a size three to nine and size seven. So let's start with the variegated sizes there. And so then you've got you've got all sorts of different sizes. Sizes three. Oh, okay. We'll get the yeah the details of crash, but we will get all of these. We will get you the details for these in a minute. Let's concentrate on the demo. This keeps happening to us, producer Hannah. Technology gremlins. So you do need a sharper needle, not a cross stitch needle. Okay. Otherwise, you it won't get through the linen in the okay. background. So when you're looking at a chart for cross stitch, it will show you, and I've just got a marking pen, it will show you on your chart, your midpoint on your pattern. So you have a little arrow at the top mm -hmm. and a little arrow at the side. And if you follow the, those two to meet in the middle, you'll get yourself a midpoint square. So on this one here, it's like a little snowflake. Okay. So each of these little symbols refer down to a key that's down here. So all the little black ones, little uh, black stars, are the black. Mm -hmm. And all the wibbly wobbly, what's that mathematical symbol called? Uh, infinity. Infinity, thank you. All the infinities are yellow and all the two little lines next to each other are white. So it's quite a simple key to follow, it's only three. So that's okay. a nice place to start. So what we're going to do... So what's this giving? Is this giving us the colour? Those are reference numbers to a specific colour. And I'll have to admit, I didn't check to see which brand of thread that she uses. OK, all right, but, no, that's fine. Um, if, for example, um, this uses one brand of thread and we use another one, you can find conversions online. Oh, OK, Because normally cool. you can convert between the two. So I'm not sure what she uses. Uh, but essentially, it's a black, a white and an orangey. orangey you might just yellowy. have those in your stash. You might not you never need know. to, you know, okay. So what we'll do is we find that midpoint and then we're going to work along and we'll, we'll work a row of stitches. So we're going to start. Are you going to start mid, midway? So I'm going to start with the black because this is a section here that's black and black. Okay. And then down here, there's two rows of black and then there's some more black up here. But I'm going to start off with this little section in the middle. So with this, I'm going to, going to stitch with two threads, two um, two strands of thread. So your embroidery thread comes in six strands for each piece. And if you're lucky, and I'm not always lucky, you can you find your loose end and you pull, and I'll pull one length, if you like. I am never that lucky. No, Which sometimes is why you're not. <laughs> yesterday we had on our storage show, we had a storage for your embroidery threads with a hundred little. Um, cardboard things you can wind just perfect and then you don't have to ever have that this. doesn't it's always lucky. work sometimes it all knots up and goes all yeah that, that's me. sometimes it pulls out and you just go oh. ah. so i'll take that and this is made up of six strands so i always tend to just hold the end and just give it a bit of a pat um, okay. across the end and that sort of loosens up some of the threads enough for me to see okay well there's two there so I'll grab the two in one hand and the four in the other. And I'll pull this down as I go, just to separate those off. Right. So I've got four there and two there. Mm -hmm. and I'll thread that on. So you've got more you can come back to later. Yes, we'll, we'll use those later. Especially if you're doing three Bs. Thread oh, we've that. got graphics again. Oh, there we go. So there's your book. Oh, it's gone. <laughs> It was there, just quick. Did you see it? Just for a little snippet of time. Here's your embroidery thread. Yeah, watch that instead of watching me thread a needle. Yeah, no, I've got some packets of embroidery thread here. And I've also got the black by itself in there somewhere as well. Uh, ooh, yep. Yeah. So if you just want the black, then that's 99p. It'll go crazy. Ooh. Get two. Last of the big spenders. And you get 25 metres. Okay, maybe you don't need to get two. Maybe not two. Well, yeah. depends what you're making. 
Now, uh, if you want to, I've got bright and I've got pastel. These are your brights. And you're getting 36 in here for 7 99 That's amazing value. That's a good deal, isn't it? Yeah, and again, eight metres in here. 36 skeins, eight metres of each. Different colours. And then these are your pastels. And again, 36 of these, eight metres on each. Well, now I feel like I've told you a lie saying that there was 25 metres on this one. A different mate. Hang on. Just... Be, oh, no, it's eight metres. Sorry, it's my mistake. Eight metres on, on that one as well. Tash, it's the pearl one. The pearl one? The pearl, when we have the pearl embroidery, oh, you I've get not the, had more pearl. on there. Oh, no, uh, right, pearl. anyway. We're not, we haven't got those. Would you like one of our needle threaders? Pro probably. Does it work with two strands? Yes. It yes, does. it does. Yeah, because I'm making a dog's dinner of this. Oh, I have to show you because they are brilliant. Oh, Tash, what am I doing? Well, I don't know. Come on. Now, the other thing to show you. Oh, now. Oh, I'm there. I'm there. I've done it. Hey! But now, you, I'm going to make you wait now. That's fine. Um, <laughs> That's fine. I can get, get my breath can, back. Yeah, relax. Now, how about this? This is your Liberty cross stitch. But I mean, if Liberty are going to do anything, they're going to do it beautifully, right? They really are. Yeah. Um, so you can use these motifs in the same way. Oh, it's a nice book. It's a beautiful book. Um, and so you can just add a little bit of that detailing in. How beautiful is that? And of course, it's going to go beautifully with your Liberty designs because, you know, it's Liberty. How beautiful, adding that little bit of extra detailing in to make things a little bit extra special. Bringing Liberty Charm into your life. Wow, absolutely, look at that. Oh, isn't that beautiful? Oh, hang on a minute. <laughs> whoa, 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 no, look at, look at that. Tasha's on got some new shoes. Bottom of the shoes. Oh, that's just divine. Uh, no, I'm not gonna fit into those. Oh, my. Big old plates of meat. Um, <laughs> we sell fabric by the half meter. Ah, uh, look, look, look. look. <laughs> right, another <laughs> embroidery. Right, Pete. <laughs> uh, <laughs> cheeky. Uh, Sorry. <laughs> what do you think my feet are? Mm. So all of your um, all of your templates in the back as well, and your patterns. Stunning. I want to make those <laughs> look at the little slippers. Oh, they are very little slippers. Look, look at those. That's for when you have them and they, you know, you still they stay where you put them. Yes. Before they start Doesn't running around long, all over it? the place. No. Mm -mm. <gasps> right. Okay. So Pretty now cool that I designs have designs there to say, by the way. Well, that's good. Yeah. Good value. Good, isn't it? Ten ninety nine. Yeah. I like it. So now that I have expertly threaded a needle... Well done, it was beautifully done, I am impressed. Yeah. Designer 101. Yeah, yeah, yeah nice. <laughs> Classy. So I've found my midpoint, and I'm going to start at the end of a row. So that row is five stitches. So I've got, I'm in the middle, and I'm just going to go across another two... Let's go two stitches, because it's a, a, there's a row of five. So I'll bring the needle through from the back to the front. Okay. And I'll do... For me, I'll do a row of all the diagonal stitches. So I'll go across. Ah, oh, you see, so you do this differently to me. Oh, do you do each cross at a time? Because I get distracted. Ah. Oh. So I have to finish one full cross. One full cross. I like to do a row and then come back and work the other way. Okay. We'll let you. Everybody's got their own different way. It's just stick to it, isn't it? So if you have yep. a way that you do, stick to it and keep that way yeah keep the consistency so that if you so that all of your first half of the crosses all go in the one direction mm. and the second top layer all go in the same direction it makes smoother finish won't yeah you? it makes it look a lot flatter and a lot neater oh, oh well, i was wondering when if you were trying to do a texture sort of of an animal fur or something you might want to do oh, it yeah, yeah you if you're trying to get a, a bit but I, 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 it's running before we can walk isn't it I get overexcited so and think, I what think it's if? five. Let me check. One, two, three, four, five. Yep. One, two, three, four, five. So I've gone all the way across and I come back and go the other direction. You can hear, can't you, when it goes through correctly? And then you, add, okay, so you end up coming through where you left off. 
and then back in the same holes, aren't you? Yes, using those same holes. And it does feel slightly different stitching with a sharp needle when you're doing cross stitch. It feels really weird, but you do need it. I, tr I did try it with a blunt needle and it didn't work very nicely. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I would then continue and work all the way across doing all the black and then I would go back and do all the orange and the white and then I'd finish off doing the back stitching. Although the, the back stitching on this one isn't so much about outlining, it's more the detail for the antenna. Would you wait then until that was on the actual apron? Um, no, I think I would just leave that and do that. Uh, sorry, I mean, I would just stitch those when I stitch that part of the B. Okay, where are we going now? Um, I thought I'd just do a couple underneath, do the rest of his stripe in the middle. Oh, then you've done, oh, then you've done the full So the full I've done stripe. that full... Yeah, then I'll have his full stripe done. I noticed that people time. that cross stitch hold their needles slightly differently. They sort of post it in. Post it in. Yeah, you I guess it you is a bit of, like that. Yeah, you sort of hold it from the top. Yes, but you would right, You wouldn't sew like that no, normally, you would you? But they're... I hadn't really thought about that. But you can tell someone that does cross stitching because it is just a different needle oh, position. I used to do it all the time. Did you? Yeah, and I went out when I found out that we were doing it. Um, I went and found out all my old projects. Do you know, so many people on Facebook did it. It was so lovely. And mm. our fan page, our Sewing Quarter fan page, just became this, this beautiful gallery well, of hey, everyone's cross-stitch. And it was one of those things where, it, it, you know, you realise just how... And, and some of the beautiful stories... That's what's nice. ..that went with it. There was one lady that had found... Actually, it was a tap tapestry, I think, rather than a... Oh, was it a cushion? Yes, that she'd found when I think it was her father-in-law had passed away. I think this is the, the right family member. And in, in his 80s, and he'd done part of it. And she finished So she it finished it off and then sent it to his daughter as a finished item. That's really nice to finish off. It's going to make me blub oh, again. Oh, don't. Getting all emotional again. But it was just, and so, and time and time again, there were these beautiful stories that people were, and you just realise you are stitching heirloom they items. They absolutely are. So special. And that, that's why it's nice to incorporate that little bit of yourself in projects yes. that you give to people. Yes. So there we go. That's two rows of the bee. Mm -hmm. And then here's, in a blue piece of kind of fashion, here's one I made earlier. Hurrah. Hello, bee. The bee I've done earlier. So this bee is the one that I've finished off. So you can see I've got the same little stripe section in the middle. He's got his wings and he's got his little antenna on as well. The white no. you can't see quite so well on the blue. Now, here's the thing, because on the pinny itself, mm -hmm. there's no blue Ada. Is there not? No, oh. I hate to tell you this. Good grief. But look. Oh, it's not there. <laughs> and this is the magic bit. I'm like, okay. Yes, you were quite concerned. I just said, what? Have you done that then? I What's really don't know. Uh, but these are your bees. But you don't want your Ada. No, so where has it gone? So this is where you then take out your basting stitches from your Ada. And I'm using some duck build scissors. I'm just going to snip that off. Why are you using the duck build? Because in a minute, I'm just going to trim away some of that Ada. So it wasn't just that Joe left them lying around? No, it wasn't. Okay, She'd right. just been careless and messy. You know what she's like. <laughs> I'll take that out. Uh, it says there's details for the scissors going across the bottom. Do you know what? 20, um, 20, 12 99 for these scissors. And actually, they're incredibly sharp and very useful. They are very useful mm. in all sorts of ways. So I'll take that out. And then I'm just sliding under this curved section. The, if anyone hasn't seen these scissors before, they are like no ordinary pair of scissors. They look like you're about to do some sort of operation. It do, they do look very surgical. So you've got two different blades. You've got your standard sharp blade, and on the underside, you've got... It is still sharp, but on this outside edge, you've got a curved edge that's chamfered. Is that the right word? So it's thin at one end and thicker at the other end. Oh, right. oh look at that. Yeah, I've never noticed that bit. Yeah. yeah. So that helps lift the upper piece of fabric. Ah. So if you slide that underneath, that helps lift up this top layer of fabric so that you can then trim away some of this excess. Oh, excellent. So it's going to help you? Yes, that helps. 
But there is still, I hate to tell you this, there's still blue left. Still blue left. Mm. I need to cut better. <laughs> <laughs> so at this point, if you trim away as much of it as you can. You just keep going around until you can't go any further. Yeah. But then you still have some left. So what you need to do is raid your beauty cabinet and find yourself a pair of tweezers. Ordinary tweezers. And what you'll find then, oh, that's my basting stitch is still there, is that you then just pick away at the Ada. Is this quite? Oh, it's great. Is it quite satisfying? Yeah, and hurts less than doing your eyebrows. And it is a job that takes a little while, but you just pick away at that Ada, and gradually, it all comes out. So actually, just the starting off bit is the bit that takes the time. Yeah, and then when you get underneath the stitches, you can. Oh, just that's it satisfying. Out. Do you want to go? Yes. The only place where you need to be careful is on where you've got back stitch and just hold your finger I'm not going to do that on. Bit. Okay, you do the bits. <coughs> right you can do the bits on the outside. <laughs> but when you come to the back stitch part, just hold it with your finger and pull the threads. Uh, producer Hannah doesn't understand why it's not all unraveling. Why isn't it all, all unraveling? Because I guess you've sort of knotted it by the, by the way that you've created the cross stitch. Oh, this is very satisfying. And, is, and then these bits here that have gone a bit fluffy, you can then pull those out vertically. Um, Hannah, Hannah's getting very upset upstairs. She's like, that's making my teeth go on edge. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, She doesn't why? like it. Look away. What, the metal Hannah. on metal or just the fabric or? I don't know. Oh, just don't the know. pulling bit. It's so satisfying. I, well, I think we had a conversation about the, those odd hairs that arrive <laughs> uh, apparently overnight and are an inch long and quite dark. I have no idea what she's talking about. <laughs> Random <laughs> hairs. <laughs> So this is, this is, yeah, far less painful than having to do that. This is very satisfying. It is, isn't it? The only time you sometimes get a little bit unstuck is because you've had to use a sharp needle rather mm. than a blunt needle. Sometimes you'll have missed going through the exact hole on the Ada. Right. So sometimes some of the pieces are difficult to get out. Right. And you'll have just gone, you'll have accidentally pierced through the Ada pieces of thread rather than through the hole. Right, okay, I've pulled a little bit <gasps> out there. Let's That's because I've, that. I've come in with my sharp tweezers. But look, no, it's all right, I've fixed yeah. it. I've fixed, it's all good. And um, you would use blunt tweezers, but I only have my sharp ones to hand. This is so sad. So you just, this is, this is again, this is one of those jobs you sit in front of the TV and do. That's what I did when I made the apron. Did you? I did all the cross stitching in front of the TV and then I sat down and pulled out all the threads. So that's yeah. where the, the scissors, the applique scissors, are really useful because it gets rid of loads of the, of the Ada that you don't need. Yes. And so then it you haven't got you as much to pull out. Ages. Oh, and there, you see it's starting to... Come together. Yeah. That's great. Oh, look. Oh, I've got a, I've got a big bit. A big bit. Got a big bit. Oh, this is... Very satisfying. Uh, right, what else can we talk about when I just do this? Well, the, the way that you do that, like I say, is I, I thought it was nice to do that before you construct the top part of right. the apron. Yes. So you attach the, um, the cross stitch, mm -hmm. you make the top part of the apron sewing those together, and then you attach that to the waistband. And the waistband oh, is nice. made by, uh, you've got, oh, actually, what I didn't mention, Oh, what's that? The, the strap that goes around the neck. Make sure you attach the strap inside. So when you're attaching the, the bodice, make sure that you put the strap inside right before you attach you. the front to the back of the bodice. Yes, yes, um, yes. And just make sure that, calculate on this side of the, of the bodice your one and a half centimetre seam allowance. And the edge of your neck strap sits up against that one and a half centimetres so that you come up the side seam and you pivot and that goes at the very pivot point. Does that make sense? I'm going to say go yes because I'm not actually... You just nod, it's just I'm, nod I'm, and I'm smile. Just, I'm just really enjoying pulling, um, pulling this out of the bee. So yes, when you attach that in, make sure that that goes there as well. So then when you've done that, you yep. then have the waistband and the ties are sewn into one big long strip. Okay. But you've got the two little, you've got two side seams, if you like. So the bodice is attached centrally on that strip here. And then you attach the skirt on the other half. 
Hmm. I'll leave her alone. Oh, I've just done it. Finished. Right, I'm all yours. Have you really? Yeah, yeah finished. Yeah. So you've got the strip. This is attached right sides together with the bodice and then right sides together with the skirt. That in here. And then you effectively... I like that green. I really like that green. It looks nice, doesn't it? Yeah. Nice and zingy. That's your tulip bundle. I'm not normally a green kind of a girl. I couldn't, you know, do green. Would like you not do have... this green? I've got one green top, that's it. See, I don't do bottle green, but I'll do jewel that's bright nice. green. I love it. Well, that's going to work beautifully, isn't it? It looks nice. And what you could also do, actually, is you could use a little bit of that to trim a pocket. Oh, nice. That would look nice so that you've got it here, the neck band, and a little bit on the pocket, I think, would also look nice, wouldn't it? Do you want to see my bee? Yeah, let's see it's your bee. It's now my bee. Now your bee that you spent hours doing. I spent hours pulling the Ada out. <laughs> <laughs> Look at my bee! I love that. See, it's so clever, isn't it? It's so satisfying. So then you can stitch any design onto many a project. And because that Ada was underneath it, you've got extra, re you've got extra relief almost, yes. haven't you, on yep. it? Yeah. So if you wanted a bigger bee, choose an 11 count. If you want a really small bee, choose an 18 or a 22 count. That's Go brilliant. really tiny. Um, the books are going to sell out this hour, so please check out your baskets if you've got the books in. What else is going to sell out? That one is about to sell out. We'll show you the Liberty one again. So same sort of concept of prettying st uh, things up with your cross stitch, and you've got all your patterns in the back. Victoria, this is brilliant. It's great, isn't it? Yes. Oh, look, you see the little hair pieces? Mm. Great fascinator, an alternative fascinator. Yes. For weddings. You see, again, if you want to make very pretty personalised bags. Oh, and a little black dress revisited. Oh, nice. Oh. It's a bit special, isn't it? It's very special. Oh, it's just unashamedly beautiful, isn't it? I love that. Isn't that gorgeous? You see, you can, but I mean, these give you ideas, but you can put them in anything. Lovely, and then your all of your patterns in the back. And these are nice because they're colour coded charts, which yes. you just hold your hand a little bit more. Because sometimes cross stitch charts can make your eyes go a bit squiffy. Oh, Victoria, thank you. I've had no problem. Uh, Take your bee. It's yours to keep. Thanks. No okay. problem. Thank you ever so much. I will yeah, see no you. When, I, when will I see you? Oh, I can't remember. So it's, it's Easter holidays, not for Sometime. two weeks. Sometime. Sometime. Thank you. No problem. Amazing. Right. Bundles. The Katie Jane bundle is here. So, <laughs> I have B will take everywhere. Um, here we go. So, this is your bundle. You've got instructions. You've also got the layout plan. Uh, that's with each of these kits. Then you also get your thread. You get your Katie Jane fabric, half a metre of that, and a metre of this lovely flax linen, wash linen. Beautiful. $21.99. Maybe you want to go Devon County, a classic. Maybe that's what you want to go for, in which case you get a half a metre of your Devon County. And we won't be reordering this, so you know when you see a project with a bit of Devon County, if you like it, grab it while you can. And a metre, again, of your flax linen. Love, love, love. Um, and there is your instructions. And then if you want to um, go all out with the bees, then why not go for the Tulo in that lovely zesty green? Fabulous. And then you've got, so you've got half a metre and a metre and your instructions and your thread. Hurrah. Do you know what, actually, I'm, you, I'd be tempted to applique one of those bees on as well. So many, so many bees, not enough time. Now, the book with the bees is sold out. Well done if you managed to get that. Um, we do have the Liberty. I'll remove the B from the Liberty because it looks like I've, that's in there. You get lots of different ideas in here. Was it 24 or 25 did I say that this book had? 24. 24. Oh, look, it says right on the front. There you go. 24 designs to sew. Uh, nice sizes as well. Different sizes from your little ones up to quite a sizable one there. Beautiful. 10.99. Beautiful. Now, if you head to our website, which is www.sewingquarter.com, the very first page that you will come up with will have that bit that spins around. 
Um, and that's, and you will find on there uh, magazine subscriptions. Now, normally that's simply sewing and our quilting magazines, but we've added in now a chance for you to try three issues of our cross stitch magazine. So we've got cross stitch crazy. Uh, we have got the next one there, which is world of cross stitching. And then we've got cross stitch gold. So kind of beginner, medium, and then expert is, is kind of how, how those go. Yeah. Now let's see what we have got coming up tomorrow. And then producer Hannah has an announcement. Oh gosh. <sighs> mm. uh, 8 a.m. Baby girl romper. Oh yes. Oh yes. That's with Janice at 8 a.m. 9 a.m. Susie John's book launch. Fabulous. You've all seen the advert for that one. 10 a.m. Joe Carter's kangaroo. And then 11 a.m. We've got Susie John's shoulder bag. Hurrah. So that is how tomorrow. That says coming up with John. Is it John tomorrow? Who is it? Is it? Oh, the announcement is about the dinosaur. I've just grabbed them anyway. It's about tomorrow. Hang on. Facebook Live with John Scott. We have a secret announcement. Am I meant to be telling everyone this if it's a secret? There's a Facebook Live tomorrow with John Scott after the show. So be there Thursday, 29th of March at 12.15. Secret announcement. I don't know what it is. I'm surprised because I thought it was me tomorrow. So I, I'm all surprised. All sorts of surprised, always round. Uh, so apparently it's John tomorrow. That's great, got a day off. Oh, excellent. Um, now, if you missed the dinosaur, 8 a.m. for the dinosaur, we still have some left. I know that you don't want to miss out on your dinosaurs. Please check out, we've got purple and blue dinosaurs. He's very cuddly. 24.99 LGXC81. That's your code for your dinosaur. Do not miss out. Purple or blue, which is absolutely fab. Which uh, apron are you going for? That's the decision. Decisions, decisions. And of course, you know, get those cross stitches out. I love that we've had cross stitch two days in a row, which is just fabulous. Please do keep on sharing those. Um, if you are on Facebook, then if you look at SQ fans, so and quarter fans, then it will come up with our fan page. And uh, it's just a, a lovely environment for sharing your make, sharing your design ideas. It's just beautiful. Really, really nice community there. Um, now, 8 a.m. tomorrow isn't, isn't Janice. It's Jo. And what's she doing? With her patchwork bear. So uh, apologies for that. It's not, it's not Janice at all. It's Jo. She's got a patchwork bear in a bag. She'll be on on Friday with Janice. All right, we'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Join us on Facebook. Simply search for The Sewing Quarter and like our page for the latest news and more. On Thursday, the 29th of March, we've got Jo Carter in the studio with a brand new softy. Jo will be on the show with her adorable mother kangaroo and baby, made from soft, plush, honey brown Shannon fabric. First seen in Simply Sew magazine, this new softy is sure to be a hit with all the kids in your life. Jo will be here to show us how to make this toy family from top to tail and give you the tips you need to make these lovely characters part of your softy collection. So don't miss out on Jo's brand new edition on Thursday the 29th of March at 10am. Only on Sewing Quarter, Freeview Channel 78 and Sky Channel 678.